Legend has it that some are born into greatness and others are just lucky. In a world where an adult man can be named Mang Zero. It's Mango. Mango? Really? Yeah. Like my grandma's favorite food? I'm, I'm over this. Mango? Really? Yeah. He may not be old enough to sign a lease, rent a car, or obtain a legal permit to feed a pig in Arizona, but he can kick your butt and smash. Now, these guys will compete with the fate of the entire universe. Wait, it's not the entire universe? It's Super Smash Brothers? That's cool too. I want to get in on that action. I have an arm too. Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018. And once again, some big time names as we introduce the other half of our competitors here. And Vicky, what can you say about some of the accolades of these players here? Well, Mr. R is one of the players that a lot of people know from Smash Brothers for Wii U, fifth at Frostbite 2018. Um, he did do second at Evo 2017, so that definitely put him on the map. He also helped mold the Sheik meta. So Mr. R, no, being a known player, um, making his ways around the community, but also MK Leo, a prodigy to his respective game, very young player, 17 years old, coming all the way from Mexico. And we take a look at the player cards and see what characters our players selected for this opening round. And obviously, there are three that they drafted here. Mr. R, you see the selection right below Lucky, MK, Leo, and Mango. And how about the inkling decision for Mango here, Vish? Oh One of the new characters of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Honestly, I'm really excited that Mango got inkling because, you know, his playstyle is reckless. It's flashy. He's not afraid to risk it all. He's like, you know what? This is a new type of character. I'm just going to play it. Right, away, right off the bat, why not? And Vish, as they get set, take us through some strategy with doubles because obviously there's a lot going on in the map and you want to make sure that you have some focused, concentrated attacks, but it's not 1v1 where you can really just focus in on one target. Yeah, true, true, true. And the uh, the percentages also work a little bit differently in doubles. You know, the, the normal hits don't do as much percentage as they would in singles versus doubles. But a lot of it is just kind of like taking up space with your player. Oh my god. And Mango going Ganondorf right off the bat. I like it. But yeah, so they kind of want to just go around both the other players, kind of pincer them in certain situations. One person grabs the edge, one person stays in the center of the stage. Those are the, the, the basics to kind of play doubles really well. Let's pick this up in Moray Towers. Red team, Mr. R going as Cloud. You see the limit meter right there. A couple of up tilts by Lucky, and you see Mango using Ganondorf and Vicky. Ganondorf brings a new weapon to his arsenal in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Ganondorf now has a sword for his smash attacks. As you saw earlier, Lucky losing his shield quite early within the game. And I'm so happy we get to see a display of Ganondorf not just using his fists and his feet, Jordan, but also the sword. And Vish, you look at this map, all the different levels, it's going to be really hard to establish a neutral game when there's so much verticality in Moray Towers as Cloud gets sent to the top of the screen and now Mr. R taking a trip to the left. Yeah, I think uh, moves that have huge hitboxes do really well as we saw the, the, the smash attack from Bayonetta going through the platforms like that. I think huge hitboxes like uh, Ganon's as well will do really well on the stage. So great choices from everyone. Cloud also a huge uh, sword hitbox will kind of just traverse and cover the, uh, the stage really well. Mango in the middle of your map right now, paired with MK Leo's Bayonetta. 3-3 three, three stocks with the blue team. However, Lucky losing the first stock and it's 3-2 red and Mr. R at 135 with Cloud at the top of your screen. Trying to avoid getting knocked out. And you see another fighter to your left, Mango, able to recover with Ganon on the left-hand side, but Lucky sets him down off the stage here, Vicky. And now it is an equal game between red and blue. You had a very similar fight to what people noticed from MKLeo and Mr. R, and unfortunately, Mr. R star KOing in the back.
background and losing his stocks left with two stocks in total now. MK Leo with Bayonetta doing a great job of hanging on. Still on the stage. 3-2 advantage for the blue team over the 2-2 two -two for the red. Our Mango with Ganon missing with a couple of forward tilts right there. But you see Mr. R, nice work with the up air, able to connect. MK Leo able to punish Lucky right there as well too, Fish. Are you guys noticing that it feels like Mango's going right for Lucky every single time they're together? I see some heated battles coming up right now. Mango's like kind of just abandoning his teammate. He's like, you know what, Lucky, I'm coming down for you down there, man. See me. Lucky unable to recover at the bottom of your screen. He's down to his final stock. MK Leo, though, Vicky, still with his three stocks. He will refuse to KO, but here comes the smash. Well, Lucky's going to go ahead and grab that. We know with that smash attack, you want to make sure your opponents are lined up. Oh, but no. Self-inflicted KO, Vicky, and you got to be careful. You can't get too excited. Unfortunately, he was facing the wrong direction and caused himself to lose that stock, Jordan. Oh, oh but we see Lucky getting the KO on MK Leo, and it's 2-2 blue team. However, 1-1 for Mr. R and Lucky. You're looking for MK Leo and Mango to close things out. Mango doing a great job, and oh, look at the top of your screen, Vish. What did we just see there? Oh, man, a vertical KO. I mean, now it's just a two-on-one situation. Uh, what, 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 can they, what, what can you really do, man? This, this is difficult. Mango with oh, a nice back air and Ganondorf, MK Leo trying to use the down air. Lucky trying to elude and just get on some type of even footing. Oh, oh beautiful ooh. counter against Ganondorf. Sends him off to the side, unable to recover. And Mango down to his final stock. MK Leo, though, still has two. You figure, and that's the pivotal. Oh, but it's oh, but not enough. The huge contact there. Hanging on, but yes. He's living again. He refuses to quit. That, that cuts Lucky trying to hang on. Hang on, you figure the cutscene is a KO. But when you're confusing this system, you talk about being able to stay alive and just relentless and relentless from what we saw there. MK Leo, especially with that Bayonetta, Vicky, staying alive to give the blue team the early advantage. We DI those and we live in, but not live in enough. Unfortunately, they are going to fall, and MK Leo's team is going to proceed through bracket with Mango. Let's take a look at the updated bracket after our first two matches, and we'll see how these fighters will continue to make their way. So MK Leo and Mango, they get the victory, which means they will face off in a 1v1 coming up next, and it will also be Zero versus Armada in a 1v1 as well, too. But let's get to our elimination bracket, because obviously it's double elimination in this tournament. You got to send some folks home if you don't keep winning. It'll be doubles at this point, which will then send us to a four-player free-for-all in the next round. So you're going to have Abadongo and Plup versus Mr. R and Lucky in some doubles. And once again, when we look at those doubles, it seems like Vish, the fighter that's able to really make the most of having those three full stocks. We saw that with MK Leo, with Bayonetta. You're able just to apply consistent pressure. And we've seen that in both fights as well, too, having the lead with the 3-0 stock. Yeah, I mean, that just gives you that huge two-on-one potential. And uh, now going into this match, they can't use that first character they had in that arsenal. So now they got to switch between the remaining two that they have. And I'm really curious to see how Lucky, with his fast pace kind of play style, is going to change versus Plup and Abadongo and how Mr. R is going to go through this, man. It's, it's going to be crazy. Let's take a look at the updated player cards and see what characters are still available for choice. As we said, players drafted three characters, and once you've used a character, you can no longer use them. You see that character that's ineligible, they are grayed out. So for Abadongo, you've got your Mewtwo and Pac-Man still, Plup, Pit and Villager, Mr. R, Ryu and Little Mac, and then for Lucky, you have Bowser and Fox. So you look at some of the available oh. characters here. Not too many big, heavy characters out there here, Vicky. Not at all, but you still have to watch out for them because, as you notice, things are a little bit different in 1v1s versus free-for-alls or teams. The damage does not scale the same. As in four-player free-for-all, uh, the damage scales less than when you're in 1v1s. And Vish, you look at the fact that you have items on now for this yeah. doubles elimination matchup, and you also have the Smash Ball on, and so when it comes to items, how do you go about and change your strategy with that? Because that's not what we typically see in competitive play. Right, right. I think uh, it was clever, if this was what Lucky was thinking, to keep Fox because he has the reflector, which does so much more when you have items. I mean, it reflects back um, items at twice the force. And if you have Pokemon, it reflects back. Oh, but he says no, Vish. I'm going to go Bowser. <laughs> We've got Mr. R as Ryu, Lucky as Bowser, Abadongo as Pac-Man, and Plup as Villager. Both players 
They have four stocks each. Items are on, so keep an eye out for that as you see the chocolate bar fly through the sky. And already, Lucky choosing Bowser. You see how big of a target he is, Vicky, taking on lots of damage at 65. He may be taking on a lot of damage, but he also deals a lot of damage on his own, so you're going to want to watch out as the trajectory of the game sends you pretty far. We see the Starman Assist Trophy come out, and what's different is if you can KO the Assist Trophy, that's going to eliminate a stock, so keep an eye out for that in this version of Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. We already see our first fighter sent flying off the screen. Lucky, Abadongo on the right-hand side trying to recover. Oh, and Ryu goes out already. Oh, my God, we got Knuckles. Knuckles, the Assist Trophy. Knuckles, the Assist Trophy, breaking the hearts of so many, but here he comes trying to assist the blue team. X-Bomb deployed off the side of the stage as well, too. You see some bottles of milk flying in there, trying to get some help. Plup doing a great job with that forward tilt, clearing out the room of Lucky. Both <laughs> fighters get juggled in the air, both Lucky and Mr. R, and smash ball on the stage. This can certainly turn the tide. Abadongo and Plup still with four stocks each, and Mr. R losing his second stock there, Fish. Oh, yeah, and no one has seemed to got the smash ball. They, they all really went for it. I mean, that really changes his pace of any kind of match. That Oh, my, and Plup going so far for it, doesn't quite get it. And Lucky with the Giga Bowser. What is he going to do? What is he going to target? This punch is brutal. And Abadongo going down. Waka 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 Patman sent off the stage right there. Lucky using Giga Bowser and the punch, but now Bowser and Lucky down to two stocks. Yeah. You've got a huge advantage for the blue team as Abadango still hasn't taken a damage on his third stock here, Vicky. Yeah, unfortunately, that's a walk of goodbye to Pac-Man, but it doesn't matter because they're still in the lead. Abba holding on to the bomb and Mr. R out of the stadium. Ryu down to his final stock. Mr. R really going to have to hang in there tight. You've seen the pressure applied from both Abba Dongo and Plup, two speedy characters working their way around the stage right now. Pac-Man using the down air on Lucky. Lucky gets sent sailing. We now have our launch star, one of the new items. You get sent to that, and that does it. That sends Bowser, top of the screen, KO. Both Mr. R and Lucky down to their final stock. No stock sharing at this point here. Abadongo Plup looking very healthy at this point here, Vish. Yeah, I mean, honestly, yeah, that, that uh, star launcher is really strong. I mean, it killed, it, K it KO'd Lucky at such a high percent off the top like that. I really like it. But I think now it seems like Lucky and Mr. R are kind of slowing down the pace. They were going really, really fast at the start of it, and they got comboed quite a bit, and now they're kind of controlling center as best they can. But the stock lead is just so substantial for Abadongo and Plup. Oh, Bowser with the fair. That's going to clear things out. Abadongo at three, Plup at two. Mr. R, he is eliminated, and you've got Lucky at 82%. It's two on one and plenty of stocks for both Abadongo and Plup. Abadongo at 103, Bowser at 113. He's hanging on still. Both fighters, though, have him in his sights. Lucky trying to hang in there. Plup doing a great job with those juggles, though, Vicky. Yeah, he was doing a good job at avoiding Abadongo and Plup and avoiding trying to get hit by them and instead opted for them to get the blast. But oh my <laughs> goodness, we're having the three-part ship here oh. from Kirby Air Ride. I'm so glad we were able to see that once again. Come back to the Smash Games, Jordan. A decisive victory. Nicely done as you look at Plup and Abadongo. And it seemed like, Vish, their characters were just much quicker than what we saw for the other selections, Ryu and Bowser, and your opportunity to grab those items really gives you control of the stage. Yeah, I think um, because Bowser is like one of the slower of the cast in this particular set, I think that, you know, he just couldn't get up there as quickly, and he's so big, so he just got kind of tossed around by the other two uh, the, the, the enemies. So he wasn't able to get the Smash Balls very well. He got one, but he wasn't able to get the items, and, oh, man, just kind of a slower pace. Ryu also not the fastest in that kind of team's dynamic, but Abba and Plup pull it out, man. Let's go ahead and take a look at the updated standings here now that we look at the bracket and see how things are advancing for our players. The elimination bracket, Abba, Dongo, and Plup, they get the victory. That means they'll move on. Mr. R and Lucky, we appreciate you guys joining us, but it is an elimination tournament, unfortunately. So a couple people have to go home. But we're gonna take a quick pause from the high level play we see from the professionals and switch gears to a couple of special guests. And for more on that, let's please welcome to the stage one of the great Super Smash Brothers hosts and commentators, TK Breezy! <laughs> Okay. Okay, this is the type of crowd I like to see right here. Smash Brothers.
I like it. I like it. I see a lot of people that I know, and that's great to see. But how are you guys enjoying this Invitational right now? That's good to know. That's good to know. Thank you. Thank you. That's good to know, but let me go ahead and tell you guys what's going to go down real quick, okay? We had our For Glory action going on, you know. We're going to hit some for fun real quick. We have a six-minute free-for-all with items and Smash Balls on with some of the greatest cosplayers I might have seen today. Jordan, let me ask you, though, how are you enjoying the Invitational right now? I'm loving it. I think the biggest thing is the crowd and the support that we see here. You talk about the Super Smash Brothers community, and we're seeing it in full force here, TK. Most definitely. Thank you, guys. Here, this, this is the type of energy that I like. I almost walked in uh, this morning and thought I was actually at a tournament. Like, there's so many people that I knew. I was like, man, are we? am I in bracket? I might be in bracket. All right. So let's get into it. We got our cosplayers. Can we get our cosplayers to the stage? And these cosplayers are Jesus as Mario, Trisha as Link, Tyson as Ness, and Matt as Pac-Man. these outfits here, TK. And how about Pac-Man right there? I love it. I love it. Now they will get a chance to play Super Smash Brothers Ultimate for the first time ever. What advice would you give some folks that are picking this game up for the first time? All right, so you know how we, when we Smash 4 started and everyone was just rolling all over the place and it was impossible to beat? Well, that's not a thing here because in this game, there's actually diminishing return on the rolls. So the more that you roll, the longer the roll is, thus meaning you're gonna get punished. So I'd say ease up off those triggers for a little bit because you don't wanna be that guy who gets punished for rolling entirely too much. And what's different is we see some different mechanics with the air dodging as well too, and just the general speed of the game. Oh yeah, most definitely. The air dodging now, there's directional air dodging if you haven't seen, but also for the Brawl players and the Smash 4 players, there still is that Brawl-esque in Smash 4 uh, air dodge if you do not hold a direction when you air dodge. It's a little uh, less lag, still m laggy enough for you to get punished, but there is a little less lag, so it's a little safer. And a couple of changes to some classic characters. What did you see from the newest edition of Link that we have in this one? Okay, this is actually gonna be, uh, this is, I'm glad that we're seeing some Link action. Also, one, shout out to you guys all playing the character that you're cosplaying right now. I mean, that's just, we didn't that's plan just that. character we loyalty. Didn't plan that. That's, that's just character that. loyalty I right love there. The devotion right there. So they're getting set for the matchup here. Obviously, they get a chance to get their hands on the game for the first time. And yeah. I really want to know from you that short hop mechanic for the forward attacks that we see in the air as well, too. Seems like it's going to really help out some players that aren't quite at that competitive level. Yeah, I mean, short hops have been in the game, uh, you know, for a long time. It's just not something that we ever really, like, discussed. It's not like an official term. It's just, hey, man, this is a, this is a jump. This is a short hop, but now they kind of made it an official term. We have uh, short hops in the game, making it much easier to, you know, attack, keep that pressure going on on someone when they're on the ground or maybe on a small platform or a low platform. You can keep it going. Keep it going. And what's interesting, too, is we were talking about this a little bit before. The damage output is different when it's a 1v1 versus a four-player free-for-all match. Tell us a little bit more about that. All right, so the damage output, I, I'm just coming here rattling off information. I've been going at this game for, for you know, a little bit upstairs. We was out there chilling, so I got, uh, you know, I got some inside scoop. But the damage output, you obviously do, I, I don't know which one uh, people want to call the, the normalized damage, but you have a certain amount of damage that you do in one-on-ones, and then you have uh, a certain amount of damage that you do in free frauds or, you know, 2v2s. So the damage is definitely different. You're going to do more damage in one-on-ones, obviously, to compensate for the fact that it's just you. And then in doubles, because you have a team partner, you're going to do a little less damage. It's not anything crazy. It's not like a 50% a cut or anything. But, you know, maybe up smash does 18 in singles, and then up smash does like 15 or so in doubles. And I'm curious as well, too, it's going to be Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, every character we've ever seen before, but a couple of new ones, Inkling and Ridley. Many people waiting a long time to see Ridley in this game. Your thoughts on both those characters? I mean, I was, I was just as surprised as everyone else. I mean, you guys, when Ridley came out, how, how surprised were you guys? Come on. <laughs> Big surprise. All right, guys, but outside of that, we're going to get into the match. We have the fighters ready. They are all still playing the characters they are cosplayed, which, again, I have to appreciate. Let's see how it goes down. We got the ready to fight on... The, on deck, and I'm just ready to see what's going to happen. And in this four-player free-for-all, if you want to follow the action, you can see the color of the smoke when they get knocked off the stage. That'll tell you who launched who. You've got a nice, convenient little radar. But let's get things rolling here. It's no secret. You got Mario, you got Link, you got Pac-Man, and this four-player free-for-all here, TK. Right. The Pac-Man, like, he's got the gloves on, so I don't even know how he's fully gripping this controller right now. So I want to see some... So just some platinum Pac-Man play coming in for this, man. He looks so focused. Let me, just, let me get a good look at his face. 
He's focused, man. He's actually he's in it. He's dialed in, dude. He's dialed in. You've got the champion's tunic link. A couple differences there. And no hook shot for that link this time. Oh, no, no quick shot this time. If, uh, for those who do not know, Link actually is the Breath of the Wild link, so he does not have a hook shot one. He uh, also has detonatable bombs, much like the game. You can put a bomb out, leave it out for a long time, and then uh, as the opponent gets closer, you throw it towards your opponent and it hits him. You detonate it and get big damage. Smash ball on, items on. You see Ness with that smart bomb deploys that. That's going to be Mario sent sailing, but Mario hanging on right there. Bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Up tilt from Pac-Man. That clears out Link at this point. you got a super scope on the stage as well, too, if you want to use that. And TK early on, our fighter's doing a great oh. job of hanging in there. But Link getting an early KO. Yeah, early Ness. KO for Link. I was wondering who's going to get that first one because it was actually looking jam-packed in here. And as we're looking at the big screen and also some player faces, we're still looking at your focus. Oh my, who is that coming off the left side? We got, we got the final smash coming in from Ness. He's taking almost everybody out on that one. Ness grabs the smash ball. You also saw Lolan Volpix on the bottom of your screen as well too. Early on, and what we're going to see here, TK, is that the leader is going to light up here in just a little bit so you can follow and see who has the lead. Pac-Man doing a great job clearing out and getting a KO against Ness right there, so negating probably what Ness did with that smash ball. And as, as Jordan said, there is an indicator for who is in the lead. He will flash uh, momentarily. So it's kind of like the get that guy, <laughs> you know, the get that guy uh, notice right there. If you want to get in the lead, you know exactly who to take out. That black hole right behind the launch star. You got an essential galaxy in the middle of this map as everything since spiraling in there. All four players on the map at this point. Oh, but here comes the crane Yo, from the crane. RK Bunny. RK Bunny. What you know about RK Bunny, TK? I, listen, I'm not enough in the best crane player, but whoever is operating that crane is a god. Beehive falling onto the stage as well, too. And then Link with those remote bombs that we know much different than from what we've seen in iterations in the past. Yeah, man, you cannot, you see him already has it set out. Now all he has to do is hit down B one more time to go ahead and explode it. Obviously, going to wait his time, uh, wait around a little bit to see if anyone's going to get next to it. Actually, it's not even on the stage anymore. It might have just rolled off. But now that it's off stage, he is able to pull another one. You only have one bomb at a time as Link. Oh, here we go. Ness at the top of the screen, just barely living that. It gets a dash attack. Not going to get too much off of that. Looking for the PK Thunder. Little ambitious there. Pac-Man in the middle of your screen right now. You see the star rod right behind him. Nobody grabbing that. That remote bomb sending Ness to the top of the screen. Ness and Mario on the right-hand side going a little 1v1. That fair knocking Mario back at this point. Oh, but you see the upward smash. And another smash ball. Oh. You should get that. Oh, two you smash get balls, that. you say? You should get that one. Hit that one. Okay, Mario. Here comes Mario. Oh, no. And the Pac-Man. Sailing. It wasn't a real one. It was fake. You guys, so a, a good way to notice, now that it's been out there, a good way to notice the smash ball is real and fake is if the horizontal line is thick, that is a fake smash ball. Now, uh, none of our competitors might have seen it, end up getting blasted by it, it just goes off any one of the vicinity is taking big damage. That's just mean to put two of those out there. Smart Mom being deployed by Pac-Man once again. That's it, it's Mario to the top of your screen. Ness trying to use a PK Thunder on the left-hand side. Link with the beautiful up air. Here comes that Hokitate bomb that's going to come crashing down here in just a second. Some bananas on your bottom right. Got to get that potassium, Mario. Watch out for that bomb coming back down to Earth. Doesn't do any damage at that point. 215 left in this one, TK. Tightly contested. Look, very smart for that Mario to go for those bananas, too, man. Has the highest percentage on deck right now. As you can see, the Rage Mechanic is obviously still in. Look at his uh, portrait right now. He's smoking. I mean, he's extra mad. He is it's fuming, and the next person to take the up smash for him might be the last up smash they'll ever see. Mario, 138 at this point, trying to use the down air as he comes back down to earth. Mario with the up B, that's going to clear out some traffic. Link trying to use that aura club potentially, but Ness gets sent sailing to the left-hand side of your screen. Mario gets Kato. We got a minute 43 left, and it looks like Link is going to be the one in the advantage right now. Here comes Eevee. Eevee with the headbutt on Ness, sends him sailing through the sky. Yeah, it's just a quick tackle coming from Eevee. We had again this Ness. Is Definitely gonna be losing that HP if he keeps trying to battle this one. And here we go, got another Smash Ball. Immediately drops it. Mario can't connect. Oh, he, he gets, gets out one. Oh, he gets one of them. He sends Link sailing on the ocean. That was close, man. He almost got the, the double KO, the double annihilation. That would have been crazy for him. So down to the wire, though. Pac-Man, the only one really in uh, a KO percentages. But he's trying to still put up a good fight. 
Ness with the back air against Pac-Man. Nicely done right there. Link trying to shield block against that PK fire. Able to punish that. Pac-Man trying to throw some more projectiles on the left-hand side of your screen. Ness getting sent to the left-hand side as well, too. Super scope available at this point. And TK, we got a minute left in this one. We got a minute left. And I'm honestly, I have not been keeping up the score as well as one would have. I wish I was. Oh, it's been crazy for me. Screen the assist trophy Pokemon. Excuse me, the Pokemon gets the KO. And yeah, you gotta watch out. And honestly, it might still be walking around the stage. Yeah, it's coming right back. Look at him. You gotta watch yourself. Okay, it was actually Mario. It was close, so he made that was his trainer. Not gonna, not gonna jump the trainer. Oh, black man. How about that? The one-two KO sends Link sailing to the top of the screen. 25 seconds left in this one. Looking to close things out. Ness is really the only one here, TK and KO range. Yeah, that is very true. Obviously, where it's gonna be a lot until we get uh, some extra damage here or anybody else are actually still eating the fruit that is dropping from the trees. If you guys remember from Tortoise Island, this is a 3DS stain. Everyone! Oh, but the hot head clearing things happened. out! All right! The sun, I mean, obviously coming through. You gotta salute that. Looking like we've been trainers over here. Oh, that does it. Who's our winner gonna be here, TK? Who's the winner of this one? Oh! Pac-Man Fever! Pac-Man Fever, TK! Pac-Man does it. Look, even with the gloves on, I wasn't sure if he was gonna be able to do it, but the gloves did not stop this man from taking that major win here at the Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018. Give it up to my man, Pac-Man. All right, guys, so that was a lot of fun, but we're going to get right back into the Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018, throwing it to our casters. TK Breezy, give it up for TK Breezy one more time here. Nicely done. It's always great here, Vish, to see some players get their hands on Super Smash Brothers Ultimate for the first time, and you see all the fun that they had right there. I love seeing Smash Bros of any skill level, especially this early in the game. It's so hype. I mean, Pac-Man, a Pac-Man cosplayer winning as Pac-Man, what more can you ask for, it doesn't for get, Smash Ultimate? It doesn't get any better than that. And Vicky, we talk about fun, and that's the one thing we talk to all these professional players about. They say the one thing they try to remind themselves before they go out for any type of competition is that it's still a game and it's meant to be fun. Exactly. Not only does it bring friends together sometimes, <laughs> but it also allows great family time and it grants everyone to kind of loosen up and enjoy the game for what it is. Let's go ahead and take a look at the most recent bracket as we get set to advance on our professional side of the tournament here. We're going to have a one-on-one. -on -one one, zero versus Armada. They were on the winning doubles team that overcame Abadango and Plup earlier in our first round of action. Let's take a look at the player cards here and see who they might be selecting. You see Zero has Sheik and Ike still available. Armada, Pokemon Trainer, and Kirby and Pokemon Trainer. A few changes that will certainly benefit that style of play in this edition here, Vicky. It's going to be quite interesting because this time around, Pokemon Trainer has no fatigue. And you talk about that ability with no fatigue and interesting things you can do in the air here as far as combos and dodging, Vish, when you're using Pokemon Trainer. I think it's actually really cool because Squirtle, you know, he has like uh, lighter hits, so he can do light hits and then maybe switch in the jump animation. You can switch uh, Pokemon in this version. So then you can switch the Ivysaur, do a finishing move that way. And I think the really interesting thing is you have three sets of recoveries with uh, Pokemon Trainer because of you can doing it. You can do it while in the air. So I think that'll make you can you can use a uh, Ivysaur's Tether recovery. You can use Charizard's multiple jumps. You can use Squirtle. And he goes Pokemon Trainer. I choose you, Ike versus Pokemon Trainer. Smash Ball on. So Vicky, with that Smash Ball being on, how does that change the strategy in a one v one? Well, as you notice, the Smash Ball doesn't usually appear in the beginning of the match, and more so in the middle of the match. So I know that Zero is going to be keeping his eye out for that, and Armada is going to want to try to take it over Zero before he tries to stifle. We talk about Armada has a very strong punish game, so he will look for holes in Zero, but Zero getting the nice grab into the side throw. Armada down below Zero at this point here, and Vish, it's one of these levels. We talked about Moray Towers, hard to establish that neutral game consistently. For sure, for sure, but I think Ivysaur is a great choice in this kind of stage because the vines kind of go through uh, the platforms as well, and even the up air, the bulb kind of hits up the platform. But the really cool part about Ivysaur is how 
he KOs his opponents, that upper will get you at like even 100%, so you gotta really watch out for that. Both fighters finally on neutral ground, the punish by Armada right there after blocking the attack from Zero Zero with the up air that sends Armada sailing to the side. And how about the fair that we just saw from Zero there, Vicky? Yeah, he's doing a really good job at keeping Armada off stage and unfortunately unable to make it back. You saw Armada uh, rolling a lot, and we've established already defensive play in this game is not rewarded, Jordan. It's more so aggressive play. Well put, aggressive play, and we see Armada go with the much faster Squirtle this time against Zero. Squirtle with a nice dash attack into the up air. That's going to send Zero sailing. Zero able to recover, though, nicely. And you look at Ike and those multitude of recovery options. That's going to really help out Zero as a heavier character, Vish. For sure, for sure. I, I really like the way that uh, these players are playing. They're using the whole stage. Uh, I, I kind of thought they would be e either in the center or whatnot, but they are just going all across the board. There's so many ledges that they have to edge guard. So that makes it quite harder, and I feel like that gives kind of a bit of an advantage to uh, Ike in the way he recovers because the way the side B goes through the stage and then the up B goes so high up, but a little bit of positional advantage for him. Squirtle with the nice back air against Zero, unable to get onto neutral ground and make a punish there. Armada versus Zero. Armada down to two stocks. Zero still making the most of his third stock, but Armada, oh, and we see the weight of Zero and Ike really benefiting him right there, Vicky. Yeah, these ceilings are absolutely humongous, but there's a smash ball, and Armada knocking Zero out of the map and trying his best to try to get the smash ball, but Zero is not having it. Although he lost his stock, he still manages to get the smash ball and manages to land the Aether. Unbelievable turn of events right there as we see Zero getting the KO on Armada. Armada down to his final stock and fish. We thought Armada had a chance to get the KO against Zero and grab the smash ball during spawn. Wasn't able to do that. Yeah, I mean, that, that was kind of the flight of Squirtle, unfortunately. Not like a huge uh, amount of damage output in a quick amount of time unless you combo it. So Squirtle wasn't able to get the job done. And I just came through swinging and he destroyed my man Squirtle. Why you gotta do Squirtle like that, man? A couple of down tilts by Zero, unable to connect. Armada doing a great job of jumping from the lower level to the top level and connecting with a couple of those aerial attacks against Zero. That up air does a great job. Ivysaur and Armada trying to hang on with their final stock, and Vicky, once again, Zero doing a great job making the most of he can with his extra stock advantage. Notice the pressure that Zero is applying on Armada as Armada's trying to find his footing back below the platform of Zero. Uh, he's trying to figure out a way to not get pressured as often. Yeah, I mean, the sword just does such amount of damage and covers so much of the stage. I mean, the vines do a little bit, but again, Squirtle is not working out very well, and the vines only hit at, like, diagonal kind of trajectories. So just Ike's sword is putting in so much work right now. We see Zero and Ike trying to gain the upper ground on the ramps and try to get some of those down tilts. Forward air, not enough to send Ivysaur off the stage. Can he recover? No, the vine is too short. Needed a little bit more sunshine, water, and fertilizer to get that one to the edge of the stage. And we see Zero doing a great job of not only edge guarding, but getting the smash ball. It seemed like Vicky, that really turned the entire tide of this match. Although he had lost his stock in the moment where the smash ball appeared, he still managed to capture the smash ball. But around the end there, as you notice, that Ivysaur was unable to grab the ledge. Magnet hands isn't as significant in this game, Jordan. And we see with Ike a heavy character, but you also have a lot of range with that sword. What else do you see from Ike? in this edition from the little bit of gameplay we've seen for one of those signature Fire Emblem characters here, Vish. I, I feel just like a little bit faster, and I think even on uh, th that stage that we played on Mori, it, it just felt like he could traverse the, uh, the, the platform so much better with his side B was an amazing recovery. The vertical uh, recovery that he normally has was strengthened by that stage so much, so it just felt like None of the Pokemon could get a significant KO on him, but every single time he was just in there with, there with the sword. So. Yeah, we never saw Charizard in that match for Pokemon Trainer as well, too. Let's take a look at the bracket after that match. We obviously have Zero getting the victory over Armada. Zero will advance in the winner's round to the finals of the winner's round prior to the grand finals. Up next in our winner's round, reminder, smash ball on, items off. MK Leo versus Mango. And you were talking about MK Leo a little bit earlier here, Vicky. Zero had that unbelievable year in 2015, won 56 straight tournaments. But many people say the youngster, MK Leo, could be the second coming. Yeah, he re revolutionized the way that Marth played in a sense where uh, consistently was able to master his spacing, um, was able to change the way Dancing Blade even worked with Tipper mix ups. So, seeing how he's going to be going into this game, uh, you already saw him display Bayonetta. Uh, so he does have two other characters that he can use, Jordan. 
And let's take a look at those character cards for both MK, Leo, and Mango as they get set. And we remind you, they drafted three players. You have to use all three players at least once before you use another character again. You can write them out. Oh, and you look at MK, Leo. You've got either Snake or Sonic for Mango. You've got the Inkling or Link as an option. And you look at a 1v1, and let's start with Mango here, Fish. You've got Inkling, you've got Link. It's a 1v1, so you can really focus and concentrate your strategy. Who do you think you might want to lean on here? I mean, uh, Inkling, I feel like, might do a little bit better in one-on-one -on -one because it, uh, some of the dynamics of Ink is that if you throw Ink on your opponent, they get more uh, damage subsequent hits. If you have Ink on the ground when you use your roller, it causes the opponent to slide or walk slower while it's on it. So I feel like you could even tech chase a little bit with the side B, and then from there you can have the slower movement work really well in a one-on-one -on -one type situation. Link is also really good because his, uh, his bombs detonate after you hit down B again. So there's there's like a lot of setups you could do uh, a little bit better in one-on-one -on -one situations with both those characters. I have a feeling that he's gonna go Inkling. Oh, it's, yes, and Mega going Inkling, fulfilling the fans' desires and wants. Wah, 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 wah. Sonic versus oh. the Inkling. Mango has the Inkling. And already we see Sonic, a very fast, speedy character. You're gonna have to be really accurate against him, Vicky. Yeah, Mango was uh, telling me how he really likes the way that Inkling plays, and he would probably want to play Inkling uh, when it comes to this game. Character has a lot to offer, especially coming from the Splatoon series. Uh, you want to keep your eye out for that final smash, so you're gonna see Mango try to go for the killer whale. Yeah. And you see the ink cartridge next to the inkling. You've got to remember, you have to refill that. You can hold shield and B if you want to refill it. All of your ink-based attacks need to use that ink. And so, not only are you managing the stage here, Fish, but it's ink management as well, too, if you're inkling. For sure. I mean, the ink on the ground might not do too much against a speedy guy like Sonic. And I just got to say, I love that we're playing on Saffron City. That is amazing that it has come back into this game. Yeah, Sabrina and her psychic Pokemon getting a great show here with Mango and MK Leo. It's both Sonic and the Inkling. Don't forget, Smash Balls are on. Oh. And here it comes. Let's go ahead and dial that up here. Sonic trying to get it. Oh, but MK Leo sending the Inkling out of the stage has a 3 2 stock advantage and a Smash Ball. So, Vicky, it's all about the timing when you use this. And here comes Super Sonic. Hey, you don't control it this time around, but MK Leo creating a gigantic. Antic wave preventing Mango from landing, but unfortunately not dealing as much damage as we thought, Jordan. Yeah. MK Leo, 3 2 advantage, 75 32. You look at the health, 75 for MK Leo, 37 for Mango, and a nice little up air by MK Leo as he continues to keep the Mango and the Inkling at bay here, Fish. Yeah, and I think the because of how tall this stage is, it's kind of working out for Sonic. You saw uh, MK Leo go on the right side bottom and not really fearful because he has the huge double jumps and he has the up B as well. But uh, yeah, ni nice stock for Mango taking it. As you saw in that moment, actually, uh, he used the up smash and it was able to KO us early because when uh, Inkling splats people and you have paint on yourself, the ink that sticks makes you take more damage in that instance. You saw that up smash pulling out the blaster, the Inkling able to make it 2-2. Now let's see if Mango can make a comeback. Beautiful fare there by MK Leo trying to keep Mango at bay. The roll dodge into the back throw, sending Mango off the stage. Oh, oh and the edge guard by the fair. How about that right there, Fish? Yeah, I mean, he read the jump beautifully and got that backer. He's, he's putting in work right now. I can't, I can't say anything negative about MK Leo. MK Leo, 2 1 stock advantage over Mango. Mango already at 47% damage. And Vicky, it seems like MK Leo doing a terrific job of juggling Mango in this matchup. He is not letting Mango hang out at all whatsoever on this stage. MK Leo, you can tell he's here to stay in this tournament, even if it means eliminating his own teammate, bitch. Yeah, I mean, it really feels like even the neutral game is being led by MK Leo. He's, just the hitboxes he's throwing out, Mango's kind of going into them, or just reading where he's going. And he's getting all these combos, the up airs, stringing the up airs. What can Mango do? Can Mango, his back? Mango at 120, MK Leo at 42. MK Leo looking for one more splat on Mango at this point. You see the jab combo, <laughs> that's gonna cover Sonic with all sorts of ink. And if you're Mango, you gotta connect on a couple hits at this point. You know that Sonic's gonna take much more damage if you can connect, but no! <laughs> The forward smash by the ink-covered Sonic will go ahead and allow him to take a victory shower after that as MK Leo advances. And Vicky, as we said, and as Vish pointed out, really MK Leo dominating the neutral game and dominating the aerial game as well, too, against what we saw there in Mango and the Inkling.
Yeah, aside from trying out a different color, he was able to make sure that Mango had a really hard time landing onto the ground and consistently juggled him, Jordan. Let's take a look at the updated bracket after that matchup and see what's happening here. And you see the couple of victories that we had in the winner's round, which means what a matchup we'll have. Zero versus MK Leo here in the next winner's matchup. 1v1, both of those fighters able to advance on. So we'll obviously move to the elimination bracket at this point as we get set for our next matchup there. And like we said, different set of rules in the elimination bracket. We now have a four-player free-for-all. Smash ball on, items on between Abadongo, Plup, Armada, and Mango. So, Vish, you look at the rules, the four-player free-for-all. Where do you begin with strategy in this one? Well, I, I see that there's three melee players in the elimination round. I see that the, the finals have got two uh, Smash Brothers for Wii U. Come on, melee players. I know you have it in you. But as we go into this, I feel like um, it's going to be interesting because there's more items on, as, as you're talking about. And I feel like that's going to introduce a lot of different kind of entropy into the match. So there's going to be a, a definite random factor. So I feel like faster characters are going to be a little bit better in this kind of setting. And characters like, I feel like Gandorf was a good example, or Ike was a really good example, where they're like relatively fast, but they hit super hard in the air, so they can still uh, get the smash ball when they need to. So characters like that are gonna really work out well. And let's look at the character card and see who we might be seeing in this four-player free-for-all smash ball on, items on as well too. Abadongo, down to Mewtwo, Pluff with Pit, Armada with Kirby, and Mango with Link, and so, Really, Vicky, a collection of some light characters, Link being your heaviest one out there. Yeah, and I'm so happy that we're gonna finally be able to see Breath of the Wild, Link Jordan. So it's gonna be uh, seeing how Link uses his bow and arrows. We saw that in the direct earlier. Uh, he is able to pick up his own arrows and use double arrows whenever he uses his bow. Yeah. Let's get set for this four-player free-for-all. As a reminder, only one player advances out of this matchup. So a lot on the line here as we continue along in the Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018. I, I actually, Mewtwo is also a very cool pick because of how much space his tail takes. Uh, takes. If you do down tilt or forward tilt, it kind of just hits pretty decently hard. It can combo well, and it takes up a lot of space. So I think Mewtwo is also a really strong pick in this kind of setting. And Vicky, you look at Mewtwo's tail and Link's sword, and a lot of times you hear some of these competitive players talk about disjointed hitboxes and hitboxes. How do those come into play with these characters? As we see Midna, the assist trophy, make an appearance. Uh, they do a really good job at controlling spacing in general, and look at Abba taking advantage of the healing field right there. He was lingering around it, and it allowed him to heal within the battlefield. So you're gonna wanna keep your eye out for these items. Oh, oh we see the up smash into the air right now, and already Pal flipping the screen upside down. And this is interesting against human characters. The controls are reversed, and so you might see a lot of these players not move as much at this point here, Vish. Yeah, they kind of just stood still. Everyone was just like, what, what, what is going on here? I don't understand where I am. So everyone just took a little, a little breather. Oh my goodness, the bluff with that down air spike already trying to be pretty dominant within this free brawl. Oh, and we got a smash ball. Kirby using all his jumps to get up there, but no, Mango! Mango gets it and misses. Oh. An arrow. That's the mango. <laughs> They're great against guardians, but you gotta connect if you wanna make good use of them. You see Abadongo, Armada, Mango, all with three stocks, but how about Club here? Vicky, 135, but all four stocks available. He's doing a pretty good job at trying to edge guard um, Armada, makes it back into the stage. Armada, trying to get away from Club, notices that he's in his line of sights. Assist yep. trophy on play. Oh, and oh. we have a Nintendo. Oh, that's a good boy. That's a good boy. <laughs> Why is it Nintendo in Smash? You just go, boy. Oh, yeah, you just go, boy. Plup at 135 still. All four stocks, but Plup gets sent sailing. Now all four fighters at three stock. Remember, only one advances. Armada trying to edge guard. Oh, wow. Plup with a couple of beautiful aerials there, Vicky. Double backer into those double stocks. And as you see right there, the color TV game 15. Everyone knows what game this is, obviously. Assist trophy. Plup is just doing a great job at just edge guarding nearly everyone on this map. 
see Mango on the left-hand side of your screen as Link getting back up on the stage, trying to edge guard against Armada. Mewtwo connected with the Shadow Ball as well, too. A couple of those three-piece items still up for grabs. Nobody has one in their arsenal at this point. Yep. Love trying to clear things out. Kirby doing a great job of clearing some real estate as well, too. Oh, and here comes Bomberman as an assist trophy. Oh, no. Bomberman is an assist trophy. Watch out. Oh! Link able to hang on, but the Shadow Ball connects with Link on the left-hand side of the screen, and Mango down to his final stock here, Fish. Yeah, that's another great part about Mewtwo. I mean, he's got a huge hitbox, and he can charge up a, traje uh, a projectile that also KOs really well. He's pretty good, and he's pretty good in teams in free for all, man. Darkrai putting a few folks to sleep. Link going to go ahead and put on that jet pack. Nice up air by Plup. Plup sending Mewtwo off to the right-hand side of the screen. Mewtwo able to hang on and grab that ledge. Yeah. Plup still trying to clear people out, doing a great job. Has these three stocks. However, let's make that two. And Armada's your leader with three stocks at 117. And the Kyogre. What's going to happen here? Oh, okay. All right. But yeah, like you're like you're saying, uh, uh, it felt like Abaddon or um, Plup had the advantage for quite some time. And then Armada kind of just snuck into the lead. There were just some careful play. Now he's staying on the top platform like that so he doesn't get hit. And he gets the smash ball. Armada with some optimal play right now. Kirby and Armada with the smash ball. One, two, three. Couple of yeah. combos. Has Link spinning right now. And that's going to send Mango out of the game at this point. Here's Electrode in the middle of the map. Getting ready to explode. Players cautiously keep their space. Up. Oh, that's a dud. Hold on. Keep an eye out for that, though. Oh, you can oh, 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 Holy fire, and Mewtwo's eliminated by Electrode, and now it's down to Plump and Armada. Both fighters relatively at the same percentage health. Armada as Kirby, Plump as Pit. Only one fighter can advance, and now it shifts to one-on-one, -on -one, Vicky, and where does your strategy change? As you can see, Armada was playing extremely patient, sneaking his way up into the lead versus Plump. He was doing a great job at ledge guarding all his opponents, but it seems right here, Armada oh with the change of momentum, and once again, Kirby Air Ride is going to make an appearance. You can't see Plump able to air dodge, and that that's a critical point right there. That is an amazing air dodge. It felt like Armada was just watching him go every time. He felt like he was just actually waiting for that defensive option, but Plump just delays it even more slightly. And Plump, uh, happy to take center stage, kind of pushing Armada into the left side of the stage. He's doing a little bit of comboing. You see Armada, what he's trying to do is stay underneath Plump and get his up tilt combo started, leading into back air. And, uh, Decent amount of percent right now on Plum. Plum doing a great job of blocking and punishing anytime Armada tries to come in with an attack. Both fighters unable to really connect, but here comes the side throw by Plum. Another item that's going to be an air ball sends Armada off the side of the screen, but you know Kirby has that terrific recover. Here comes the warp star. Kirby trying to hop in his ride and close this thing out. Oh. He's got the warp star available. And, oh, oh, and Armada with the tech. Oh, the tech from Plum. Already the tech oh. coming out. Oh my oh. goodness. And Armada. Yeah, I mean, he, he wanted to go for the edge guard with the down air, and then he got the up and Plump teched it. This is some high-level smash ultimate, and he gets the cutscene. Still living. That DI. Oh, my God. Is two going to be enough? And yes, that will do it. Plump moves on from our four-player free-for-all elimination round. And how about that, the back and forth, but let's point out that highlight, that tech off the stage that we saw there, Vish. Yeah, so he had, actually there's a, a warp star on the left side of the stage. Armada was just like, nah, I'm not even going to go for it. He goes for the down air, and then he had to recover, so he goes for the up B, and then Plup is like, you know what, I'm just going to tech that and make it. A couple of highlights in this match, and Vicky, one of them came from the beautiful air dodge by Plup. You thought Kirby had things on set, ready to go to clear oh. this out. Take us through what we see here. As you can see, Armada was preparing himself to hit him and wait for the perfect opportunity to hit Plup. But in the perfect moment, look how Plup was able to avoid the shot. Immediately after that air dodge, he felt like he was unsafe, but was able to dodge right on time. Oh my God. Unbelievable display of being able to dodge, including the fact that we talk about the multiple dodges that you do here, Vish, the less effective they are. Yeah, I mean, uh, as if you do a uh, spot dodge or roll, uh, uh, each time it has a little bit more lag on it, so it becomes sluggish. So the game itself is not trying to prom it, uh, it's promoting aggressive style of play. So if you're rolling and spot dodging quite a bit, it'll actually become slower and easier to punish. So 
Club, even with that kind of disadvantage on the defensive option, still figures out how to do the spot or the air dodge into the roll to avoid that, that KO. That's crazy. Completely changed the match. Let's take a look at the updated bracket as we continue to eliminate more and more fighters as we move along here in the Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018. Plup will move on. He will take on the loser of MK Leo and Zero coming up here next. But let's take a break from the high stakes play with our professionals and bring on a few more special guests to tell us more about that. Give it up once again for TK Breezy. I really like that entrance. Yeah, they give me the music and stuff. That's not, that's not even my, like, my theme. You know, if they could have gave me the Wii Fit Trainer theme, it would have been great. Anyway, <laughs> Vicky, TK. how's it been? It's been insane. How are you guys doing with the new Super Smash Brothers Ultimate? You can taste that energy. You can, you can really just pull that energy out the air right there. So, with that being said, again, we have another free-for-all match for you guys. Six minutes, all items, and Smash Balls on. But this time, we have some special guests. I'm gonna bring out these special guests real quick. Our first special guest being Devin Graham. And coming up against Devin Graham will be Alana Pierce. Also joining these two competitors will be Andre Meadows. This crew of homies is the ultimate homie, Zelda Williams! Everyone knows it. They heard that. They know the name. They know who it is, man. So here we are. It's going to be, as I said, another free for all six minutes. Okay, all items. Smash Bros. So it's going to get a little chaotic here on the stage. But Vicky, what are you expecting to see? So, Zelda Williams, no stranger to all of us in the community. We saw her from the last Super Smash Brothers Invitational, I believe representing Link. So, TK, I'm actually pretty excited to see who she'll be playing now, but we can't count our other fighters out either. Oh, yeah, man, I got a little inside information in the back, but I'm gonna go ahead and let the game speak for itself as we seem to be ready. Everyone's gearing up, ready to go. I gotta get right behind him. I gotta get the, you know, the, the bird's eye view, basically. I'm, I'm taller than all of them, so I can just... <laughs> You know? Not me, TK. <laughs> All right, let's look. get a better view. Let's get a better view. <laughs> so here we are, Villager, Kirby, Pac-Man, and Sheik. Three. Devin on Villager, Alana on the Kirby, Andre on the Pac-Man, and Zelda rocking the Sheik, which is still basically Zelda, so, hey, she's canon. She's canon. She's canon, although not Link playing Sheik. Now you guys could see Sheik at her finest within the new Super Smash Brothers game. And TK, how destructive is this match right now? Already summoning Kyogre. I mean, that's a big, that's a big pickup as a Pokemon. As you can see, he's just going to be blasting you off the side. If you don't have a great recovery, that's exactly what happens to you. Neither Villager nor Kirby able to get back from that situation. And now we have a solid lead. And look at Andre just chilling. He knows he's good right now, holding on to 52%, throwing the hydrant at them, and Alana pushing everyone away from her. Just wants to avoid Devin at all times. Look at the tree, TK. Hold up, we got Alatios on the screen. That's also a great Pokemon pickup, as it's doing a lot of damage. Sometimes if you're high up on damage, it will end up knocking you off. Unfortunately, this time for Zelda did not do such, and here we are in new assist. He's gonna come back though. You think it's over, but it's never over. He's coming right back. And we might be gone this time. No, he, no, might, no, he might be gone. Oh, he's back, back, he's back. Oh, no, no, he's definitely back, TK. It's for those of you who love the Pikmin series. So right now, uh, as you can see, you know, the only person really, uh, the only person really in Pikmin series right now was Devin with this villager, but however, that has been eradicated immediately. That KO is gonna go ahead and rock him, but so is another KO right here onto Alana and Zelda. Sorry, I mean, Andre is sitting pretty. I mean, without even looking at the score, I, I feel like I haven't seen Andre really hit off the screen, so he's sitting pretty. And Alana getting that big sword kill, doing a great job. And who's going to get these Pokeballs? Andre finally dropping a stock here. Alana, though, sitting at 58%. Honestly, I feel like in this build in itself, I've seen more Pokemon than I've, I've seen in the actual games. I mean, everyone's out here Pokemon Master. It's crazy. I was going to hype up Super Pong right there. Andre summoning Super Pong. For those of you who 
do know what one of the newer games are. All right. So here we are on the, on the flat part of the stage. It is going to pick back up and start traveling yet again. That is what the stage is known for. We still got Andre holding it down, but here we go. Back on the stage. Oh, the villager shot almost. Uh, probably getting a KO with that tree. I mean, it is still a very strong attack. And Andre is still sitting pretty close to 100. I mean, he's got to watch out for himself. He's the, got the higher percentage on the map right now. About to hit the halfway mark in this match. I don't want to know who's actually on the lead, man. I wish I had those scores up there. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's getting a little hot in here. Uh, Steven was doing a really good job at avoiding his opponents and continuously racking damage, TK. All right. And so now we got Alana just barely living right there. Gonna go ahead and hit the rock drop. I mean, a very uh, signature Kirby move. Still does a lot of knockback here in this game, just as one would expect. Okay. The uh, final counter from deep, from the top rope. This is gonna be a rip bomb. All right, we got, we got, we actually got a Star Wars battle right now. There's all kind of blade people on here. Definitely safe. All right, now, honestly, I've been watching Alana the entire time. She's managed to keep this stock for quite a bit. And I feel like I've been watching whoever has the highest percentage the most just to see how they're going to be able to live for as long as they can. I mean, I, you know, we, we've been talking about the knockback changes here and how it looks like you're always about to drop off, but it's just a sped-up knockback, but still about the same amount of knockback that you no, you're normal, uh, normally would see. Not only that, though, but it also shows you an indicator as to who is in the lead. So you already know what it means when you see someone blowing, and it means get him, boys. Get him, boys. <laughs> there we are, Andre. Oh, okay, that platform's off, but hold on. Okay, I had to make sure I was looking at it uh, from, from a different angle. I thought that might have been the fake one. Is he going to pop off? Does he know how to use it? He's got to drop the weapon first. He's got to hit the B button. Okay, there we go. Woo! Sure. Building his house. Got it. So did he get a stock off that? He did get a stock off that. I did see the uh, the KO. Good stuff to Devin actually dropping out that final smash. It's a little late on the draw, but it does not matter if you're late to the party as long as you still turn up. That's exactly what he did. Yeah, Tom Nook with that eviction notice. Devin doing a pretty good job. Tries to regain his stage control, but oh my goodness, the destruction coming from here. Zelda trying to linger a little bit behind, not trying to get hit too often. I actually got some inside information for all of the character picks so far. Honestly, earlier, Alana was asking me about the uh, the link changes, but I think she was opting like she didn't really like the link changes uh, or didn't want to get used to them, so she went with the bread and butter of Kirby. Zelda saying, you know what, I want to play uh, the, the, uh, Zelda, but I'm going to play Sheik because it's a little faster. And oh, so Galio! Everybody's getting a piece. Yeah, so when he's a call in Lunala. A minute left here in the game, folks. And again, man, yeah, Zelda Williams losing another stock right here. Andre still probably sitting pretty right here. He's only got 2%. And uh, the only highest percent here right now happens to be Alana. But either way, there's such low percentage. We've got to see what's going to happen here in these next few seconds. As I feel like we can get at least one or two more KOs here in the last 45 seconds of this game. TK, there's only 40 seconds on the clock, and so much destruction has been happening all around us. We've about seen only one Smash Ball happen on the stage. Two Smash Balls at that. Hey, look, the Smash Balls may not be coming out a lot, but the Pokeballs are definitely showing up. We got a Meowth on stage, throwing the paydays. And a lot of actually trying to throw hands with the Meowth. I mean, if you got behind them, or maybe on top of them, possibly, but not the, not the Pokemon game I, I've ever done. Oh, and the oh. Young Bob Snorlax! Get out of the way because you are going down with him. This is going to be a real problem here, folks. I mean, this is down to the wire. Zelda only 86, six seconds on the clock. Zelda and Devin susceptible to getting a stock taken. She barely lives in. Here we are. Let's see who oh, is the, the winner. Oh, ever connecting at the very last second, TK. And it happens to be Andre. Look, I said the boy was sitting pretty. I saw the beginning of that game, and I was like, this dude right here, okay? This dude, Andre, had the straight, the best open I've ever seen in a free for all, and he just managed to run with that for the rest of the time. So, congratulations to our people. Get, let's get a, another round of applause for our special guest who decided to play with us. But as I said, man, that was a lot of fun. We're gonna get back into the glory part of this. We gotta see who's gonna make it to that winner's side finals. And we're gonna get that going for you right now. The Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018, throwing it back to our casters. Uh, thank you very much. Big round of applause for TK Breezy once again. Nicely done, my friend.
We've had a chance to see a couple of exhibition matches, and, you know, Vish, you look at all the action that happens, and those items can certainly come into play when it's a four-player free-for-all. I'm, I'm seeing a trend of Pac-Man in these. <laughs> well, what's going on there? But, uh, yeah, I really, I really do feel like items uh, add so much uh, just kind of variation to the, to the game, and I feel like I, even at uh, the levels of the special guests, I feel like the items just add even more kind of randomness, you know? Just whoever gets it gets so much more of a power-up. They're not going to be able to dodge nearly as well, you know? Let's get set for a matchup in our winner's side, trying to find a finalist out of that to get to grand finals. Let's look at the bracket now as we get set for what appears to be a titanic matchup between Zero <laughs> and MK Leo. 1v1, Smash Ball is still on, items are off. The winner of this will move on to our grand finals. The character selection as well, too. We know that both of these fighters have used two of the three characters, so by process of elimination, it's going to be Sheik for Zero, Snake for MK Leo, and let's just put some more historical reference on this here, Vicky, a matchup of these two types of caliber of players. This is no strange max, Jordan. We are very used to seeing uh, these type of players. Unfortunately, when Zero retired, we had not seen him play MK Leo for quite some time. So watching the comeback on this stage for the Super Smash Bros. Invitational is insane. Both these fighters getting set for a big time matchup, a spot in the grand finals as well, too. And Vish, you just look at the ability that these players have. This is a game that they haven't really had a chance to play for that long, but some of those same principles get ready to help them move along. Let's get set for action here, though. 1v1, MK Leo versus Zero. Oh, man. I'm actually, uh, it's crazy that Zero actually saved the Sheik for at this juncture of the tournament because I feel like that's probably his strongest character in his arsenal just from uh, the little that we got to watch him play because the, the forward are still kind of link in a very similar way to Smash for Wii U and you, you get the uh, Bouncing Fish in a very similar way as well but air dodges are not nearly as strong so Bouncing Fish actually becomes like such a strong tool maybe you can tell us a little bit more about that Vicky yeah um, aside from that uh, you could I feel like Bouncing Fish actually comes out a lot quicker and the grenade, Sheik's grenade no longer sends her into free fall. So she is now able to recover without accidentally SD. Oh, man. MK Leo at 49, Zero at 49. Both these fighters still at neck and neck, even at this point. Three stocks each. Now we look at the advantage as Zero doing a terrific job with the juggle off the stage here, Vicky. Yeah, Snake now still has bomb recovery. Uh, he could also throw a grenade in three different distances, depending on uh, how close to yourself that you hold the analog stick. And it's insane. Zero, though, showing that Snake is nothing with that up smash. Catching his landing again, Dordan. Zero with the pair of up smashes gives him the early 3-2 stock advantage. And Vish already, we're seeing the speed of Zero versus MK, Leo, and Snake. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he's doing a really good job just kind of being underneath where uh, MK Leo is, and he gets in those tilts into those forward air combos. That's just so much damage, so much consistent damage from Zero. Feels like MK Leo can't get quite the same uh, damage output that he is, but he has the Smash Ball all to himself, and he gets it <laughs> along with the stock. Oh man! Oh, that oh, is the Smash Ball. Ball. To a pit, but here comes another one. Can Zero snag it? Oh, it's gonna be MK Leo that grabs it. Excuse me, Zero with this. MK Leo gets the smash ball, trying to get Zero in his sights. Wow. Looking for the shot. Is it gonna be enough to get Zero? Zero doing a fine job there, Vicky hopping off stage. Yeah, Zero doing a great job at avoiding that final smash. Um, quite unfortunate, but it was meant to be. Leo's gravity does sometimes stink, Jordan. A couple of up tilts by Zero right here into the juggle in the midair. Beautiful job of the forward air, and we see Zero continuing to apply that pressure here, Vish. Yeah, and uh, another uh, strong part of Sheik's play in this uh, particular iteration is that the back air is really, really strong, so any kind of offstage edge guard that he gets like that might actually KO. And we get the forward smash, still not quite great DI from uh, MK Leo. MK Leo, try, MK Leo trying to recover at this point. That up B gets him on the edge, but then the one, two grab to the side throw. Nicely done by Zero right there, Vicky. Yeah, and as you can see, Snake's up tilt is still as strong as those who have played Super Smash Brothers Brawl have witnessed. It also kills Vish. I know you've seen this a few times yourself. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. And even uh, you saw MK Leo coming back with the up B. It does have like a bit of super armor, so even though uh, Zero hit it, it did not actually knock him out of it. And now he's recovering so high. And he, that's a great mix of he dropped the bomb at the same time, so it was actually kind of scary for Zero to go there and edge guard him. Andy, Andy, what a play from MK Leo to do the bomb like that and just now it's just one to one guys. <laughs> we a couple take of stocks.
boxer swapped at that point. Both these fighters looking for a spot in the grand finals. Down to their final stock. Zero versus MK. Leo, you see the C4 in the middle of the map at this point right now. You got to watch out for that, Vicky. Yeah, as you see right here, Zero actually playing a lot more patient as now he's deciding to be a little bit more aggressive by the ledge. Wants to, oh my goodness, Leo though with these setups, not letting Zero land, taking advantage of the fact that he's deciding to contest him in the air. Zero trying to zone out MK Leo at this point, trying to put a little bit more distance between him and MK Leo, but you just see the consistent pressure by the projectiles by MK Leo. Zero, oh, with the air juggle against MK Leo. Fish, he is relentless. Oh my god, he, he brought this all the way back. Man, that's, that's so much percent out there, and I, I like the way that MK Leo is playing. He's just kind of staying back and putting mines, putting uh, grenades, but Zero just kind of dashed in because that's a really good play against this kind of defensive style. And he's, he's got needles of his own, he's got some projectiles. See a couple of grenades come out, trying to keep Zero at bay at this point. Zero at 90%, oh. MK Loud 48, oh! Zero sent to the top of the screen, still able to hold on there though, Vicky. And I like how Leo is hanging around the right side of the platform, watching it go up and down and acknowledging where he could throw his grenades to continuously pressure Zero. Yeah, and Zero also kind of making a, a good advantage of that same uh, particular location by kind of just jumping and forward airing as soon as he sees MK Leo going end up bomb. Oh, he goes for the bouncing fish way off the top. This is, this is crazy. Oh. Up beat by MK Leo to get back on stage to grab into the back throw. Is it enough? No. Zero still able to stay alive on the upper platform. MK Leo trying to put some pressure on Zero to find his way into the grand finals. Can Zero cause a comeback here, though? MK Leo, Zero, both trying to figure each other out. But here comes a chuggle from Zero here, Fish. Oh my god, and he's oh, going the bouncing fish five fish side. Oh my god. Pop zone. Look at this pop off. He's popping off, man. He, how did he make that comeback? He was down. 60% the entire time and he goes for a bouncing fish right at the end. You, that was so smart of him because he recognized that Leo had been using his rolls quite often around the end and as we discussed the mechanic, defensive play is not as rewarded as aggressive play. Right. And you obviously see just how tightly contested that matchup of MK Leo and Zero was, but you looked at the pressure that it, Zero was able to apply with Sheik throughout the entire match, and MK Leo using a lot of those bombs and projectiles from Snake to keep him at bay. It wasn't enough, though, to overcome. Take us through this instant replay here, Vish. Yeah, so he's, he's, he's recovering high. He uses the bomb there as he's dropping it, so it's kind of a, a, a big mix-up, so it doesn't seem like he's going to hit him, but he actually ends up igniting the bomb right at the end. It takes out both of them on that right side stage there and makes it even when he was down a little bit. That's crazy. I, I, I stakes right there. Let's take a look at the updated bracket here in just a moment. But however, this is when it was 1-1 here, oh. Vicky, and just the bouncing fish was the final KO that decided this one. Yeah, he recognized that Leo only option was to make it back towards the stage. He was able to capitalize off of it, Jordan. Zero gets the victory. He will move on to grand finals. MK Leo, he's not done yet, though. He'll take on Plup in the finals of the elimination bracket. So we view that bracket and we see how MK Leo now moves on down to that. Smash ball on, items on, though, for this one here, Vish. So this will certainly change the strategy up as both these fighters look to find a spot in the grand finals. For sure, for sure. And uh, just with how close that was, it feels like MK Leo is definitely hungry for that comeback to make it all the way back there. But Plup is no, no short on being a great competitor on his own. And I curi I'm curious to see what the last... Uh, character they have in that slot is because that's going to really determine how this last this uh, 1v1 is going to go let's take a look at the character cards for both of these fighters as they get set and as we said earlier each fighter had to choose three characters and now the book is completely open now that you've gone through all three you can choose whomever you would like to right. you see ridley pitt and villager available for plump mk leo bayonetta snake and Sonic, so a plethora of choices here, Vicky. Yeah, I could definitely see uh, Leo most likely up for Sonic. He did do a really good job playing Sonic, so I could see him maybe contest with that or possibly Bayonetta, although the Snake showcase was pretty exciting. Coming from Pluff, we saw his amazing pit play, uh, consistently ledge guarding his opponent, so maybe we're gonna see the pit come back. And Vish, if you're Pluff, do you maybe go with Ridley, a character that we haven't seen much of at all, because you know how well these players scout each other and know these characters in and out as far as attacking and defending against them. Do you throw a curveball there with Ridley, potentially? Y yeah, I mean, because Ridley was just so uh, recently announced, I mean, and they <laughs> didn't get to play it very much, and the character design as a whole is just so new. Something like that could work
work out really well. I'm curious to see whether um, MKLeo would go Bayonetta because you can't really ladder the same way you do, uh, ladder combo the same way you do as in uh, Smash for Wii U. So it's not quite as potent as it was, but it still kind of operates in a very similar uh, similar way, just the combo style and the play style of Bayonetta. But we have Bayonetta versus Ridley. Plump is laying it all down on the line. And MKLeo going, uh, going Bayonetta. This is going to be a good one, guys. Yeah. One of the most recent additions to the Super Smash Brothers universe and early on, Vicky, your thoughts on the character selection of what we've got going here in this 1v1. Well, I'm just so happy that we're going to finally see more showcase moves from Ridley. Uh, as those of you who was tuning, who were tuning into the Nintendo Direct, oh. Ridley's down B <laughs> has gone off it, but it doesn't matter because look oh. at this jab! Look at this jab, Vish! 40, 45%. He just had him in the corner there. Bayonetta couldn't do anything. How's it feel, Bayonetta? <laughs> Smash ball on the stage. Bayonetta's going to go ahead and grab that. That'll make a huge difference. And look at what we got going on here, Vish. Oh, my God. That, oh, this is such a beautiful final smash. A bigger Ridley just destroyed Ridley. Is that what I just saw? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. MK Leo with the early 4-3 stock advantage. And then we see Bomber on the stage here. Vicky oh. can pick that up. Oh, and all of a sudden, it's 4-2 MK Leo with a sizable advantage, Vicky. Yeah, and uh, although MK Leo does have the advantage, Ripley does have the damage output necessary to make this comeback. Oh, yeah, for sure. We saw that the, uh, the downbeat does, what, 51%? That's yeah. not... And what? What? Wait, the green how green 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 that? Wait, right. how do you said that? Wait, right. How do you said that? What game is this? Oh my god. What game is this? It's, it's green greens being such a low uh, <laughs> stage to the top that Bayonetta just does Bayonetta things, and we just gotta deal with it. MK Leo taking Plump to cruising out to Hutoon and a couple of KOs. MK Leo trying to hang on, really trying to get the punish off the edge of the edge. Oh, oh, that was so oh hard. Bayonetta unable to recover. Can Plump get back on stage with yes. Ridley? He certainly does, and it's now 3-1. But you see Plump at 106 trying to edge guard against Bayonetta. It's going to be another combo and juggle off the top oh, of the screen. Mind. And that is game. Okay. MK Leo as Bayonetta I, uh... taking Plump and Ridley for a ride at the top of the screen for Several KOs right there. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, disregard what I said earlier, Bayonetta still, still got it. Bayonetta's back on the block, looking as great as ever, looking... <laughs> <laughs> Well, we talked about it before. Oh, when you get no. your hands on a new character like Ridley, you don't get a lot of hours to put that practice in and understand every yeah. single nuance. And then, obviously, Bayonetta, every player is going to be different in each new game of the Super Smash Brothers series. And we saw MK Leo, just an absolute technician right there, Vicky. Uh, yeah, I mean, he told me himself, he was like, I'm going to play uh, Bayonetta, and I'm going to show everyone what I could do with her in the new Smash Brothers Ultimate, Jordan. Oh, my God. Let's go ahead and take a look at the bracket as we get set for our grand finals here shortly. MK Leo advancing out of the elimination bracket had a very short stay there. Didn't need to pack too big of a bag for that, which means our grand finals are set. MK Leo versus Zero. It will be a best of three between these two, and you have the option for a bracket reset if MK Leo is victorious. But before we get to that, let's go ahead and bring out our man, TK Breezy, to tell us what's coming up next. I'm really doing something, you know what I mean? I'm just talking. Vish. Hey, Vish, that last match was disgusting. Yeah, Bayonetta's pretty good. Vish. <laughs> Vish, you don't understand, okay? We thought we were getting away. We thought. <laughs> you thought wrong, TK. We thought wrong, we thought wrong. But what we're not getting away from is some more high-flying matches, obviously, man. And I got some great guests for you. So we're going to go ahead and introduce some real quick. And up first, that is... The WWE superstar, Ooh. Ember Moon. Ooh. Okay. And playing with her will be American professional football player, Mike Daniels. Oh my, oh my God. <laughs> oh also playing with them will be Actress Olivia Holt. That's some real star power on this stage. Real star power. But for the Smash Boys and girls out there, the leader of the Naifu Nation, Nairo! <laughs> Nairo! Nairo makes it. Somehow Nairo makes it. Look, he's 
celebrity in his own right, okay? He always definitely is. You see the sub count? It's crazy. Yeah. The Naifu Nation is is so happy in chat right now. <laughs> this uh, this seems a little bit. <laughs> All right, now I know you're probably like, man, this seems a little bit one-sided. Uh, well, it's a new game. We kind of even it out, okay? We even it out. It's a new game. Check it out. It's a three v one. Is that, oh, oh! Is it? Is it? Is it really a three v one? I'm 3v1? not. Look at the screen. Look at the screen. It's a three v one. What is that? Let's go. It's a three v one. Three v one. Get him. Three versus one. Can Nairo do it? This is a. It's a three v one. All the all the rest of the rules are still the same. So Nairo. You know, he uh, it's six minutes, items, it's six no team minutes. attack. No team attack? 3v1, no team attack, six <laughs> minutes, items, and smash ball. Poor Nairo. Can he do it, okay? Can oh he really overcome? This is your chance, Nairo. This is your chance at the Invitational. <laughs> you better shine, my man. <laughs> like, right, honestly, man, look, when I was backstage, I was talking to him, okay? I was talking to all the stars, you know, yeah, I was yeah. telling him, I was letting him know. I said, look. Oh, 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 dang. Let's go, Nairo! Let's go, Nairo! Okay. Let's go, Nairo! Uh, I wonder who the crowd favorite is, TK. What do you think? <laughs> oh! Hey, he's going snake! Listen, he's going listen, snake. I said it. I said it. I said it. I said it. I was like, look here. Okay. Nairo, regardless of what happens on this stage, all right? The crowd was going to be on his side, but I told them as well. If they beat Nairo in this format, you don't have to give the specifics. Just tell people you beat Nairo. That's it. Yeah. Don't give the specifics. Yeah. You beat Nairo in the first game of Smash Ultimate. That is quite, quite the reputation to have. That is, that is very true. I mean, honestly, if he was in, if he was in the tournament himself, he could have been in the finals as well. But now we're going to see if he's going to be able to clutch it out. Again, no team attack, okay? <laughs> so they can just throw moves at him. The entire time, three, he's got one. to deal with it. Oh my god. He's all right. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, we got a something. Yo, this crowd is so nice. This crowd, I love it, Nairo. Oh, love it. But either way, I mean, Nairo's not even on the, he's not even on the DK. Back. Oh. And the first time, oh, she's popping off. Ember. Oh, Ember Moon is in it. Not just in WWE, she's got it in Smash too. Yeah, she's got it all, man. It's, it's in the character. But now think about this. Check this out. Mike is actually holding it down with the grenades too. I want to see. If, oh, oh he's not holding anything down no. except for that stock loss. So oh, now, no. either way, Nairo's back on the board. Now, even though it is a three for one, Nairo does kind of slightly have an advantage because it's <laughs> everyone. Like, look, you got to think about it like this. If everyone on the team, on either team, gets KO'd, Nairo gets three points. They get one. But every time they KO him, he gets one. They only get one total. Right. Oh. Oh my Sweet. God! Oh! oh no! Oh, Nairo, what is he doing? Nairo's popping off! How, how did, oh my! He didn't have to do it to him. The box combo. The Nairo. At least he's smiling. He's like, he's, he's so happy. So he's so happy. Oh my God! The Nairo Nation is strong oh, right now. To I need to see it again. I need to see it again. I need to see another. That's a Nairo combo. It's now. instant replay. Oh, and is he gonna get the Smash Ball? That's a real one too. Is Who's he gonna, gonna get, get the Smash Ball? Oh, he's keeping everybody at bay. Uh, the back airs are flying. They're trying to get... Oh, hold up. Oh, oh. they're knocked off. His stomach back goes on the other side. Nairo, still not getting the ball. Oh, oh. Now, get it. Mike, someone get the ball. Red team, get the ball. Donkey Kong, Kirby, somebody help them. <laughs> My man, TK, is, he, he's done. He's done, he's done. There's three of you. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, you know what? Keep moving, though. That Smash Ball was never meant to be. That's all. That could have been the game-winning Smash Ball, right? There. But no. I mean, we got another. We got another three minutes. But however, that could have got it back in the lead at the very least. Oh, and Mike with the forward smash. Not going down without a fight. Definitely not going down with a fight, man. Mike, he's been trying to stay on top of Nairo the entire time. Somebody. Oh, oh, everybody, oh. please. Oh my God! Do you oh. see the way he grounded him with the side beam? They just went to town. Oh, that was actually an OD team yeah. combo right there. They yes, all over the place. They say, hey, 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 look at me, man. I'm putting him in the ground. You oh, gonna do some extra damage? I got the crash to the bank. Nairo gets the scissor though. The throwback, throwback Pokemon. Let's go. So Nairo, as I said, you know, even though Nairo uh, is successful with taking more damage than him, and, you know, over time because of them all being on a team, he right. has all of them pretty much in KO percentage. Yeah, and he, he can just go up three right now. Yeah. In, in like a span of two minutes. Okay, he gets back. Look at his oh, oh, two points right. I think he just Kirby. Oh! Oh! Yeah, oh okay. Missing the punch. 
Olivia Ho, she was going big. She was going big for it. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh. Oh, my God. He's, oh. he's igniting on him. Nairo, you can't do this to these people. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's over, dude. Na Nairo's killing it over, dude. Nairo's killing it. <laughs> Listen, we got two minutes left, and Nairo's already done two amazing combos. On these. I mean, he's just the entire team gets in the combo, too. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the side, they're doing the Donkey Kong side B again. I think that's a great combo starter that they need to get more of. Got right. the, fi the Fire Flower. Oh, all right, that's okay, good. That's good. Okay, hold on, hold on. Oh, this could be big. This, this could be big. And he gets the aim. Button we got it. Yes. Crucial. That was a necessary stock to take. I mean, honestly, Ember has kind of been just putting the team on the back, man. I, I could have yeah. saw a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, man, I'm just saying, I could have saw a one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, yeah. So right now, though, what I, what I have noticed, oh. okay. So this assist trophy, it just zooms in the screen, but as the screen is zooming in, so do the blast zones. So as the blast zones are getting closer, anyone getting hit now is more susceptible to lose that stock. Just as we see DK in the background taking an up tilt at like six, and he's gone. Man, that's crazy because on three on ones, like you're talking about, Nairo could just get really quick KOs with the Squid Sisters. Oh my God! All right, Olivia taking taking one off Nairo. Then and the black hole. Oh, oh the fake one. He's, He's igniting everything. He's got the full. He's got the full item combo. <laughs> he he's, puts a black hole with the hammer. How does he do it? <laughs> he can't get through that. He's okay, hero, we got another one. It's OP. We're dropping it. Oh, full tackle. Oh, full tackle misses. It's Mark though. All right. Well, to be real, if she didn't know about the changes, honestly, I forgot to. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I forgot to. We'll no. get that to her. <laughs> So good stuff. I mean, regardless to the uh, to the red team, they managed to get some great stock off of Nairo. But Nairo has also been getting some crazy like three v one KOs. So. And, and Nairo's just kind of staying, using his recovery a little bit more, just staying off the stage. Come on, man. Okay, and then he fi finally losing the stock. And they're 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 synchronized. You see that the way they're waiting right before he came down. They, they figured it out. Yeah, man. Here we go. Uh, I kind of want to see Nairo still go in here. They can get one last combo in these last 17 to 15 seconds here left and on the clock. Oh, I mean, oh. he's got, he's, oh, he's actually got the most percentage, so they can, they might be able to get a, a stock here. Oh, oh they can you get a stock. That's, that, yeah. that oh, might be he, something. Well, he fast fall, he's fast fall. Maybe they he's going to get the barrel, but he did not. Oh, yeah. oh. All right. All That'll right. do it. Let's see who ends up getting the win here. Oh, it's Nairo. It's Nairo. It's Nairo. Oh, can I see those points? I need to see those points. All right. All right, guys, and that was a beautiful exhibition match. Again, give it up to our competitors here. <laughs> but obviously, the action does not stop, man. We got to get into the grand finals here of our Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018. I'm gonna throw it back to the casters. We're gonna get this thing going. Give it up one more time for TK Breezy. Excellent job bringing them out there. As you said, we're getting set for the grand finals. MK Leo versus Zero. And just sort of put this into perspective as far as these players, their history, how great they are, Vicky. We talked a little bit about this. It's sort of the present and the future as far as domination in the Super Smash Brothers community. I just want to say that after this Invitational, if Zero gets his two-step, if Zero proceeds with the second win of an Invitational, then he better come out of retirement because we are finally seeing our Grand Finals match, Zero versus MK Leo. Mm, yeah, and, and he's pulling out the scarf again. Let's go, scarf army in full effect. But as we saw in previous um, the previous match, that all three characters are unlocked again, so they can start from fresh. Smash Ball is off, items are off. It's going to be a nice little one-on-one, -on -one, a clean little one-on-one. -on -one. Stage hazards will be off as well, too, so you do get a pretty good replica of some high-level competitive play between these two. There is the opportunity for a bracket reset. If MK Leo can take the first best of three, we will reset the bracket. It is double elimination, but if you're zero, you're two wins away from becoming the champion. So take me through maybe some of this character strategy. We saw what MK Leo, Vicky, was able to do with Bayonetta. Did we see if Zero counters with Sheik, or what type of decision do you think we might see from these players? Um, I'm kind of expecting the Sheik. Uh, funny that you mention it, Jordan. Uh, Bayonetta, is she going to be the best character <laughs> in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Vish? <laughs> I 
I mean, that, la that last set was kind of kind of crazy, dude. That the ladder combo's still in full effect. But uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what Zero does, because I think MKLeo is pretty con uh, comfortable with his Bayonetta pick, just based on how things are going. I feel like Zero is going to go Sheik, because it felt like he got a few of his own combo initiations and combo setups going in terms of his forward airs, in terms of his bouncing fishes off stage. So I think that's the matchup we're going to see, but I mean, we could just see a curveball with something else. What do you think? Let's get set for these grand finals of the Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018. MK Leo taking on Zero. Final destination. Smash ball off, items off, and we get set as these two titans get ready to square off against each other. The characters will be. Oh! It's a oh. me, a Mario, for Zero taking on Bayonetta for MK Leo. So no surprises with MK Leo, but Zero going with Mario. Yeah, uh, Mario also had a lot of. Uh, and up tilt setups that he had before and even uh, the up air string really well. So I think this this could work out too. He's got the combo setups with Mario as well. Curious to see how this one goes. Grand finals, best of three, one-on-one. -on -one. Smash ball off, items off as well too. MK Leo with the grab, beautiful up tilt as well too. Mario with the back air and the up tilt. A nice little juggle right there, Mickey. Yeah, Bass within be not being as safe as you may think from the previous game. But MKLeo applying a good amount of pressure. Zero playing everyone's favorite plumber, trying to play as safe as possible, does not want to get caught in that witch twist, Jordan. Grab into the down throw from Zero, unable to turn that into a combo right there. And then you continue to look at the constant pressure that MKLeo is applying on Zero here, Vish. Yeah, it feels like uh, grab combos are not quite as potent. It, it's more just for like positioning. We saw him try to go for the upper air. We saw Bayonetta try to go with uh, her throw as well, and not really connecting too much. So I think. Aerials. Oh, that was amazing spacing to be right outside that hitbox. Zero's crazy. Double forward smash? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Zero doing a great job of blocking that down air from MK Leo Bayonetta. MK Leo at 95, Zero at 92. These fighters have been so equally matched throughout this tournament. Now comes the edge guard phase by MK Leo. Zero able to get back on the stage. MK Leo sending Zero off. Zero looking for the recovery. Able to get back on, Vicky. Yeah, I like the use of the cape right there. It's able to stall his recovery, but unfortunately not going to be enough as Leo continuously goes down there and edge guards him with the back air. Yeah, so it, uh, the, le the ledge has similar mechanics to Smash for You, where you get the ledge trump, but you don't get the back air afterwards that you do in Smash for Wii U. So going out there before you even get the ledge is a great way to get the edge guard. You saw him just get the hit before you could even contest the edge. Mario into the down tilt. Oh, gets the up smash against MK Leo, and it's now two stocks to two. Oh, the dash dance? Zero? It's moving fast. Okay, the combo, and, and DI'd out of it. Okay, all right. All right, but no more up tilt combos here. But as I say that with the upper, and then trying to go for that fair, Flood is still ready for him. MK Leo, though, makes it back onto the stage. He, it, sounded, it looked like he was had, getting somebody started, especially with a forwarder at the end and then using the flood and trying to cape right after. This is some high level already. I'm really liking what I'm seeing in this one-on-one. -on -one. Zero able to avoid the KO from the juggle that we saw at the top. MK Leo so well known for that. It's 92 for MK Leo, 85 for Zero. Down to two stocks here in our first of three in the grand finals, Vicky. Like to note that SDI is not as prominent within Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, although DI does become important at later percents. And unfortunately, with that air dodge, it's going to have too much lag to be able to recover back onto the stage. A mishap by Zero. It's going to cost him a stock. It's now two stocks to one. And if you're MK Leo here, Vish, you want to make the most of this one stock advantage. <laughs> but there goes that advantage. Yeah, that Down helped. to our final stock here in the first match of the Grand Finals. Bayonetta with the up tilt. MK Leo at zero. Zero at 45% when it comes to health. Oh, we see the perfect shield right there. Yeah, and perfect shielding in this game uh, actually happens when the shield goes down. So you have to be shielding, and then you let go at the proper timing, and it does the perfect shield as opposed to previously where it would be where the shield came up. Bayonetta getting zero into that combo. Zero able to get out of there. MK Leo applying the pressure, the grab, side throw, trying to punish on the edge right there. Up B by Zero to get back on stage, Vicky. Very smart of Zero to keep his jump in the oh. end. Unfortunately, oh. he's going to be getting out of it. Oh, first game will go to MK Leo and Bayonetta. It's best of three in this grand finals. If MK Leo can steal two out of these three, we reset the bracket. What did you like from what he was doing with Bayonetta in that matchup? Uh, I like the way he was edge guarding. As soon as um, Zero was way far off, he was trying to shoot 
And I, I think before Zero could even do the up Bs to get the ledge, he would go out there and do the edge guards. At the end, though, Zero tried to mix him up by doing the up B earlier and get on stage, and we see the magnet hands are not nearly as strong as they were before. So I'm liking the little mix-ups that we're, we're seeing from both of these players. Vicky, you pointed it out. We saw a little bit of a mishap from Zero. He went with that air dodge with Mario, and the lag is so long after that. We saw the self-inflicted KO, and that was a critical stock in this match. It's quite unfortunate. Um, Directional air dodge actually has a lot of ending lag, so you don't want to do it too high above the ground. You kind of want to do it closer to the ground, so that way you can take advantage. But also, at the same time, Jordan, we can't be dodging too much in this game, or else it starts slowing down. It certainly does. Both these fighters have the chance to change their characters as they get set, so let's get you set for Game 2 in this Grand Finals. We're looking for a potential bracket reset. If MK Leo can get the victory over Zero, Zero is just two games away from becoming our Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018 champion. And we have Sheik versus Sonic, a couple of very speedy characters here, Mish. For sure, and uh, like we were mentioning before, just the, the, the tilt combos, the forward airs, the bouncing fish, it, it feels like Zero is definitely in his comfort zone here uh, going up against the Sonic. Sonic doing a great job early on with the grab into the down throw, getting the juggle early on. Both fighters spacing each other out, but MK Leo at only 8%, zero already with 62% damage. And Mickey, we see those throws by MK Leo and Sonic leading to some nice two and three hit combos. Yeah, MK Leo is doing a really good job at taking advantage of catching landings with wow. Sonic, uh, a character who is known to have some of the fastest speed in the game. Yeah, yeah, and, and we see a lot of. Uh, Moves hitting into back air or even uh, out of throws as we're talking about doing the up air and then he does the up B really cleverly to get out of Zero's range and then using the aerial drift to get back to the center stage. I really like this play and he's using the up B there again to try to edge guard him as the bumper falls down. It does have a hitbox and an up smash coming out from MK Leo taking the first stock. MK Leo's up smash gives him the 3-2 stock advantage. MK Leo at just 55% as well, so he's gonna try and certainly make the most of this. The crowd chanting MK Leo, the support for the young here as he tries to upset zero another grab Vicky into a juggle and we see MK Leo dominating the aerial game here early on yeah zero finally finding his footing onto the ground and how exciting would it be Jordan to see a bracket reset and more characters on the screen now we see Leo taking advantage of sonic speed yeah and he's doing a really good job while zero is above him just kind of homing in and uh, figuring out where exactly he's going to go and then connecting it to up airs and back airs as he's been doing. So he's just following him while he's in the air and he gets oh! the, the, the charge for Amesh. He just caught Zero jumping right into it. Brilliantly played by MK Leo and Sonic and he has a commanding 3-1 to one stock lead at this point. Zero trying to come back and take a game from MK Leo. If not, we're going to have a bracket reset and a quick one like that. Oh, oh but she did it. Smash and it's now two stocks to one here, Vicky. That follow up into the up smash was just beautiful coming from Zero, and MKLeo is not faltering. Notice how Zero now has one stock. He does have quite a hill to climb here. Yeah, MKLeo, Zero. As we said, MKLeo can advance with a victory here and advance it to a bracket reset. Sheik trying to get that bear to connect. No luck right there. MKLeo coming back down to the field. Block trying to punish right there, but Zero able to recover with Sheik. Both fighters still staying in the middle of this map here, Fish. I gotta say, MKLeo is doing such a great job getting out of these combos using the up B. It's like really fast and gets you so far up there that Zero can't really get anything started. And then he just aerial drifts to like the center of the stage. It's a really great play for MKLeo and he gets... I almost gets the upper. This guy's going. This guy's going nuts. Beautiful yeah. mix-up by MK Leo to keep zero at bay. 100 for zero. 92.5 for MK Leo. MK Leo with the two to one stock advantage. Trying to get the KO at the top with the up air. No luck right there. The grab into the side throw from zero. MK Leo with that forward air. Now he has to edge guard. Zero getting back up on the stage. MK Leo trying to close this one out here, Vic. He's playing extremely patient right here, but unfortunately falls susceptible to zero's up smash once again, Vish. Yeah, I mean. That like we're talking about, if he does that aerial drift that many times, eventually Zero's gonna get a read on him. And he read that up smash, but gets the back air with the cutscene finish. Beautiful. We have a bracket reset. MK Leo taking two games from Zero.
in our grand final. So let's go ahead and reset this thing. And now it becomes a true best two out of three between both these very talented fighters. And what we saw there, Vicky, with Sonic was the ability to really dominate the aerial game. But as Vish pointed out, getting out of those combos that Zero was trying to throw at him. Yeah, using the spring as well as an option to just make sure he's not going to be falling uh, to Zero's combos. He kept his ground really well throughout the entire match and continuously racked up a lot of damage on Zero as Zero was trying to find his footing back to the stage. But uh, I will say that it felt like Zero was kind of adapting towards the end because he kind of understood, okay, he's going to try to get out of my combos as soon as he can with the up B. So as the set goes on, I'm wondering if Zero will punish those kind of uh, up Bs and then trying to wait for the aerial drift a little bit harder even. So it's going to be interesting to see how this progresses. Well, let's get ready for our grand finals. It'll be best two out of three. We had the bracket reset. MK Leo taken on zero. Let's see the character selection. Oh, oh Sonic versus Mario. Take me back to all my arguments in the 1990s right here, Vicky. Oh my goodness, the ultimate battle. And what a great fitting battle at that here within our final grand finals match. And here we are, Sonic versus Mario, ladies and gentlemen, with Super Smash Brothers Ultimate on the screen. Where are we leaving right now, Vish? This, this is crazy, man. I could not have picked these two more iconic characters for, so, for such a finals. Um, it feels like Zero is, MK Leo is really uh, controlling the center well, and he goes back to center, and because he has such speed with Sonic, he can just dash all the way back and punish uh, Zero's movement. So he's already got a little bit of a lead. Side grab into the throw by Zero, able to clear space out of MK Leo. Zero trying to move around MK Leo with that speed, gets that dash attack to connect. Oh, but there's the air dodge we talked about. Vicky able to recover in time. Right. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately he had to resort to recovering uh, early there, and he got hit by forward smash, but he was still able to make it back onto the stage. Right. Right. MK Leo with the 56 percent health advantage to zeros 114 early on both fighters at three stocks yeah it just really feels like this the uh, mk leo is content with just kind of keeping center stage oh and a, a strong forward smash but not quite enough percent trying to use the flood to push him off not enough the drift but gets the up smash on recovery like that zero up smash from zero clears things out and you continue to look at the three to one three to two stock advantage for zero at this point MK Leo and Sonic trying to connect with that forward smash back air. No good right there. Sonic able to miss right there, but the punish and the throw by Zero here, Vicky. Yeah, and it's just as Vish said, Zero adapting to MK Leo and playing a lot more aggressively. Yeah, I also feel like Zero is actually staying really grounded as opposed to jumping because MK Leo would just kind of get those punishes while Zero is in the air. And Zero's just like, you know, I'm going to stay in the ground and get these nice little ground combos and rack up some percent going into the stock. The one, two, three jab on the edge guard, another down tilt to the edge guard, and Zero really doing a fine job staying grounded with Mario, getting those combos against MK Leo he wasn't able to get in the last game here, Vic. Oh man, it really it really feels like yeah, it's hard to edge guard Sonic just the way he uh, bounces like that and goes all the way below and then gets the up B. Mario can't really do much, just kind of waiting for Sonic to get back. MK Leo with a nice little up throw there. Okay. Right there, Vish, Sonic doing a great job. MK Leo, it's now two stocks to two. If you're MK Leo, this is where you try to mount a comeback with the grab and the side throw by Zero. That's gonna clear space. MK Leo can't recover in time. And now Vicky Zero's looking at a two to one stock advantage over MK Leo. A uh, similar situation as to what happened to Zero. Not happening to Leo, but as you can see right here, he's not letting it falter him as he continues to try to find a way to get in on him. Yeah, I mean, just the grounded adaptation from Zero is so hard for Sonic to contend with. He tries to throw him up in the air and get some follow-ups that way, but it's just not really a Sonic strong suit it looks like in this matchup to be grounded in that manner. Sonic with the grab and the side throw followed by oh. the bear was able to rack up some damage once again getting another throw into some combo and here comes the forward smash that connects right there both fighters getting back on stage MK Leo trying to mount a comeback down 2-1 in the stocks unable to connect with the aerial there able to connect on the ground but once again zero with the grab and the side throw Vicky. It's actually quite interesting to see that zero is actually trying to go for the perfect shield this new mechanic now introduced within the new game where he lets go of shield at the perfect time to pair Sonic. Yeah, the timing is really tight though, so it's, it's, it's very impressive that he's trying to go for it in this kind of juncture of the tournament. Oh, 
Gets the pop up, doesn't get the upper. They're back to neutral position. Zero with the two to one stock advantage, trying to get as much damage on MK Leo as he can while he still has that one stock lead. MK Leo trying to, of course, nullify that and trying to make it even ground. Oh, but the up smash from zero, not enough to clear things out. Still not enough here, Vicky. Yeah, getting the back hit of the up smash right there. Tries to go for the frontal hit instead, but unfortunately, since it was so unsafe, MK Leo was able to shield grab him and send him out of there. Grab by Zero. MK Leo at 120. Both fighters at their final stock. Zero fresh as a daisy right now with only 0%. Oh, Zero able to connect with that fair. Beautifully done right there. MK Leo trying to avoid the combo on the edge. Rolling back right there. Gets a chance to punish with the back throw. Unable to do anything else right there, Fish. Oh, and he gets he gets a couple great hits. Is he? Okay, great air dodge from Zero. He really needed that. It looked like he was in trouble with all those back airs that MK Leo was doing. Great. Nice little back air from, from Zero as well, but it is pretty difficult to edge guard Zero. Let's oh, oh my god! Oh, and oh, the Reed with the oh, up smash! Oh my god, Katja slipping. Roll Zero in. gets the up smash. He takes the first game of our grand finals. Don't forget, best two out of three. Zero needs one more game, and he will be our champion of the Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018. Oh, and what we saw there, and it's a good point that you pointed out there, Vish. We saw Zero doing a better job of staying grounded. He really got punished and damaged quite a bit by those aerials in the previous matchup against Sonic. Wasn't the case this time. Yeah, I mean, just the, how much that uh, Sonic was getting while Mario was in the air, Zero kind of saw that and he was like, you know what, if I just stay grounded, I can still start up some of my initiations with my up tilt into my up airs and even some of my throws. But Sonic has a, a much harder time, it looked like, to get those kind of same initiations. But even then, it was still really close towards the end, just uh, almost with that, that edge guard from, from MK Leo with those couple backers. You talk about MK Leo and his ability to edge guard, but the air dodge by Zero was so critical. Mm -hmm. Vicky, tell us why. Uh, because at that moment, he recognized that MKLeo was going to try to go for something. So to avoid it, he had to maneuver himself around there. But because air dodge isn't the same way in this game, you don't want to be air dodging too much. Because if you air dodge from a high distance, there's so much lag. So you could possibly be ending your stock in an SD. Well, let's get set for our next game here. MKLeo versus Zero. If Zero can get the victory here, he will be our champion. Which characters will they choose? Well, let's go ahead and just rack it up again. Mario versus Sonic. Zero controlling Mario, MK Leo controlling Sonic. And you get a chance to take a look at the different mechanics of the stage now. Right. What are we going to expect to see here strategy-wise here, Vish? I mean, it's a longer stage, so controlling center and controlling that mid-platform is going to be better. Um, it, it feels like because there are platforms, he can uh, kind of get underneath Mario and get the initiations that Sonic is really looking for. So this could work out really well for him. We'll see how it goes. And loser chooses the stage. So this was an interesting choice by MK Leo. You want to introduce some verticality to this level here, Vicky. Yeah, this is a stage that is no stranger to us, uh, town and city finally showing itself, and MKLeo with the grab, and here's the follows, but wow, Zero falling with an aerial into a grab. And we see MKLeo getting back up on the ledge at this point, trying to do an edge guard punish. Oh, Zero able to take advantage oh. of that. Three straight connections on the juggle right there, followed by the up B, and he has a 70 to 92 advantage. Zero right now looking very strong. Once again, the forward smash, is it enough? No, MK Leo able to get back on the stage here, Fish. Yeah, I mean, and I think just because the, the stage, the bottom part of the stage is so long, Sonic can just kind of traverse that way quicker. And wow, what a great recovery option doing up air and then doing another up B into up air. That actually keeps the ledge so safe. I'd be scared to edge guard if I were zero going down there. MK Leo getting back on the stage, but staring at a 148% damage right now. Zero just at 88, and there comes the smash from zero, Vicky. And uh, there's a parry that you just saw right there. The perfect shield coming out of Zero, and you can recognize that Zero's always at an advantage whenever he keeps MK Leo guessing a where option he should do off the ledge. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, for sure, for sure. MK Leo at 19%, Zero at 120, three to two stock advantage for Zero. Here we go, MK Leo with the back throw. Is it going to be enough? No, Zero able to get oh. back on stage, but that spring oh, that catches him in mid air. And how about that edge guard, Vish? That's really smart. We've seen him try to do that earlier, where the spring has a, a hitbox as it falls down there, and that one actually went, worked out perfectly against Mario's style of recovery. I like it. MK Leo getting juggled a little bit in the air, but you see those platforms are now back. Zero trying to edge guard right there. MK Leo getting back on. MK Leo rolling out of the 
couple of aerials thrown out by Zero, able to get the nice up smash. Zero yeah. coming down to earth right now at this point, and then here comes yet another combo here, Fish. Oh man, and again, just that up air off uh, from recovery just keeps him safe while he gets back on stage. It's actually a really great recovery option. Knocks him off, tries to read uh, Drift in, but Zero doesn't bite, actually aerial again instead, keeping himself safe. Oh! Gets the upper. Grab into the down throw earlier by MK Leo. Zero trying to hold things down on the ground, avoiding matching MK Leo in the air. And Vicky, you seem that strategy is working pretty well for Zero here early on. Yes, yeah, since he was trying to catch Leo with the up smash, instead Leo caught him with his forward smash, showing him what the fist has to say. Don't let me catch you sleeping right there. MK Leo with a two to one stock lead, however, at 131% damage, trying to get as much as he can, playing with house money at this point, trying to force a game three in our grand finals. Zero, meanwhile, has to eliminate two more stocks. Can MK Leo get back on? But Vicky, we see the recovery, and now it's one stock each. If Zero can get the KO here, he will be our champion, Fish. I really feel like as the set progresses, we're seeing these harder and harder reads with these huge smash attacks. I mean, they're not really crazy fast, so it must really have an understanding of who they're playing against and where exactly they're going to be during their um, trajectories. MK Leo with a couple of juggles right there. Zero on the side of the screen, getting a chance to recover here. Vicky, and you look at what's at stake with one stock left here for each fighter. Jordan, this is a perfect representation of momentum at its finest. MK Leo really showing that confidence as he continues to follow Zero up in the air and another grab. He is sent off the left side of the stage. Can he make it back safely, though? Yeah, and then... Uh... MK Leo just kind of keeping a little bit outside the range of any kind of hitboxes that Zero can do off the stage. And he gets the back air in mid at the middle of the stage. And this is going to game three, guys. Let's get some extra Super Smash Brothers Ultimate here. It is now 1 1. And we go to a winner take all decisive game three for what we saw there from MK Leo and Sonic. The addition of the platforms in that level really seemed to help with that vertical game because if you were Mario and, M and Zero and you tried to stay grounded, you still had a chance to get juggled in the air by MK Leo. Uh, as Vish pointed out, the platforms actually allowed MK Leo to take advantage of the platform pressure that he was applying to Zero. Um, although it seemed very close up to the very last stock, Leo was able to carry his momentum and take game two. Oh my god, I gotta give a shout out to both these competitors for giving us the most possible matches that we could have at this Invitational, going all the way down to the last game. I'm so excited, man. Well, we've had an unbelievable crowd. Is everybody ready for Game 3 Grand Finals Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018? It all comes down to this between MK Leo, can the youngster dethrone Zero, or will Zero look to repeat at yet another Invitational? It's Mario versus Sonic. Zero, the loser of the last game, choosing to go with the completely flat final destination here, Vish. Right, and it's exactly like we were talking about before. It just felt like his grounded game was really powered up with this kind of stage, and you just forced him to the air a little bit more with that previous one. Makes sense to me in, this, in terms of a counterpick for Zero. Early going here. No major advantage for either fighter. Zero at 35, MK Leo at 26. Both fighters, it seems like Vicky, a little cautious and just making sure that they distance themselves from each other. Yeah, this is a uh, neutral as well. So you see uh, Leo is just trying to be a little bit more defensive, does not want to land the first hit as he recognizes that Zero is trying to go for the more aggressive approach here. Um, a lot of rolls coming from Leo, which we've established isn't the best idea, but you can tell he's feeling very confident in keeping those rolls going and keeping Zero up in the air. You see the forward air from MK Leo going out. Both fighters still relatively the same health percentage. And you look at MK Leo, gotta try and put some pressure on Zero because you have to match that aggressiveness here, Fish. Yeah, and I, I like the I like the movements that they're doing. They're not uh, being too committal with any of their attacks. They're kind of dashing and then stopping their dash with their shield so they can immediately act out of it as best they can. They either get a shield grab or they can jump out and do an aerial. Oh, he goes all the way out there. I like the quick up B from MK Leo. It kind of avoids the backer that Zero was trying. It's Zero giving. MK Leo a taste of his own medicine with some aerials leading to some juggle combos, and now it's 115 MK Leo, 78 0. Both fighters, three stocks, as the winner will be your champion of the Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018. Zero looking to recover. Oh, able to avoid the spring there, Vicky. Yeah, uh, good good avoidance there coming from Zero, but he still finds himself off stage. Leo applying so much pressure from the spring, and that tech nice. fish. Oh my god, that tech was amazing. I mean, he's been seeing that the, the uh, up his spring is going to be coming out there. 
Master. He was definitely expecting it. He was just ready for it. And Zero to again off of the ledge. Zero is reading MK Leo with so many up smashes. Gets the KO. He's up a little bit. Another grab into a side throw from Zero. He's up three stocks to two, trying to make the most that he can with this. MK Leo with the grab and the forward throw. Not enough to clear Zero out of the arena at this point. Trying to edge guard. Both fighters being very technical about what they're trying to do. Oh, another grab by MK Leo into the back throw here, Fish. Oh my god, yeah, and really, really cautious play, especially on the ledge. They're just like, what is he gonna do? Am I gonna get red again? I don't wanna get smashed one more time in this finals. Oh. Patience, though, displayed from Zero. He was trying to get the read with the down smash. Notice he still has all three stocks. He is at 151, though, so MKLeo is going to try to go for those backers a little bit more often or catch a jump with an up smash. Once again, another grab into a forward throw by MKLeo, but you see Zero able to rack up damage after damage on MKLeo with a 3 to 2 stock advantage. Zero still staying alive at 163. Both these fighters. It's been back and forth throughout this entire tournament, and beautiful aerial right there, Fish. Yeah, you can really feel like the pace of this last match is a bit slower and a little bit more methodical. They're kind of just waiting and trying to punish, trying to see where the air, air dodges come out, seeing where the recoveries are come out. Like there, Zero got a great backer on the right side of the stage there. Just trying to control center is working out so well for the... Oh my god! Oh, oh Sonic smash. tried to do the down, down air, air, but the up smash by Mario trumps that. Oh. And now it's 175 to 19, but Zero with the 3 to 1 stock lead here, Vicky. Yeah, Zero with the up smash uncontested, but MK Leo with the back air, finally taking Zero's first stop. That was so smart from Zero because that's one of the few options uh, Sonic has on coming down like that. And you had it, you did th used it thus far, but that was just the hardest, coldest re I've seen. Zero is just one KO away from becoming your champion. MK Leo staring a two to one deficit in the face. Side throw by Zero. MK Leo trying to recover. Zero missing with a couple of those aerials right there. Both fighters. Couple of glancing blows. MK Leo gets back on the stage, able to punish with the smash, Vicky. Yeah, which punch is gonna hit first as MK Leo now tosses zero off stage, although he does have 91% on his last stock. He's gonna probably want to play a little bit more safely. Yeah, he really needs to just with the percent that he has. He's gotta really make every single recovery count. He's gotta get back to center as best he can. This is not a great position. It's not worked out really well for MK Leo while he's getting off the ledge. Zero's read him many, many times. Oh my goodness. Keep an eye out for that up smash from Zero. Sonic and MK Leo at 121. Zero can smell a championship. Just has to connect with one more critical hit here. Trying to block, gets the forward air. Is it enough? No. MK Leo getting back on the stage. Zero trying to close this thing out. Side throw against MK Leo. Still not enough. To oh, but here it is. is. And that is it. And your champion, oh. Zero, able to get the victory over MK Leo. Your champion of the Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018. How does he keep doing it, man? How does he win every invitation? How does he <laughs> get back all the way to finals, bringing out the scarf, bringing out the Mario? This guy cannot be stopped. He is just so good. And it, it took the third game of the grand finals, Vicky, and you look at how well masked both these players are, how well respected they are in the community, and it's certainly a treat for everybody that got a chance to watch that. Yeah, it, it was fantastic. I mean, seeing Zero with another streak here with the Super Smash Brothers Invitational. I want to know who's been giving Zero these notes because what a fantastic showcase, Vish. Oh, my God. Is Smash Brothers in this guy's blood? How is he so good at it? I mean, he's just born to play. This guy is a contender. I really love the adaptation throughout the set from both of these competitors. They really showed us what high level potentially could look like in this game. And it was a really great showing, honestly. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Like you said, a tremendous showing of skill that we saw from both Zero and MK Leo and all of our fighters. But now let's get set for our award ceremony. And for that, let's bring him out again, the creator of the Super Smash Brothers series. Put your hands together for Mr. Sakurai. <laughs> and what a treat for everybody here at the Velasco Theater. We have medals for both of our finalists here. And let's begin with our second place finisher, MK Leo. As the crowd chants Sakurai, you see the love from this community for the creator. Well, let's go ahead and get started with our award ceremony right here. We have a couple of medals for our participants here. Let's begin with our second place finisher. Please give a big round of applause for MK Leo.
And we had to get to the final game of our grand finals, but we have a champion. Give it up for Zero! And not only does our champion get a medal, but we also have a trophy for our champion. So let's go ahead and bring that out. Our Super oh. Smash Brothers Invitational 2018 Championship Trophy presented by Mr. Sakurai himself to our champion, Zero. Oh. That is a beautiful trophy. Oh my gosh. Gorgeous. Just a wonderful display. Now let's hand it over to Mr. Sakurai for a few words. Uh. Zero is really strong. Zero, you are really good. Let's ask the players who participated to come out on stage. Yeah. Let's ask the players who participated to come out on stage. So, did you enjoy the show? And I don't know if you remember, but this game is not yet done. And honestly, I was really scared that, oh my god, there's going to be a bug, it's going to freeze up. I was really scared. And speaking of which, I did find already two or three bugs while watching this tournament. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sure to fix it in the production version. Yeah. Yeah. But I was really impressed at how well you guys played despite this being a game in development. ただし、え、このゲームのバランスも日々変わっていきますし、開発中に日々変わっていきますし、またえ、今作ならではのルールを覚えると挙動もどんどん違ってくると思います。And this game is constantly being adjusted and the balancing is constantly being adjusted during development and as you learn the new rule sets for this game, I think uh the what you can do with this game will change as well. だから さっさと完成できるように日本にすぐに帰ろうと思います。今日深夜便で帰って朝に日本に到着し、すぐに仕事します。So with that said, I need to go back home to Japan and get working, so I'm going to take a midnight flight tonight and uh, start work tomorrow morning. Woo! Guys, that's good. だから皆さん、どうぞ。Thank you. And with that said, I hope you're all looking forward to the release of this game. Thank you very much. All right, let's give it up one more time for Mr. Sakurai and all of our players that took place in the Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018. Eight of the finest players representing six countries. We came down to an unbelievable grand finals. The atmosphere here at the Belasco Theater was absolutely electric. And that concludes a wonderful doubleheader day of Nintendo competitive action. You saw the Splatoon 2 World Championship. The GG Boys of Japan becoming victorious in that. We had a wonderful day getting a chance to just see not only the passion but the love from the community behind these games and of course our Super Smash Brothers Invitational 2018. MK, Leo and Zero would finally face off amongst eight of the finest players in the world. And you got to see a lot of love and support <laughs> from the community as well as a chance to see all that this game offers as it continues to be in development. And just once again, a wonderful atmosphere here at the Belasco Theater in Los Angeles. Want to give a big thank you to our commentators. Let's hear it for Vicky Kitty and Vish. 
And then, of course, Nine and Ashley Esqueda for Splatoon 2. And then, of course, a big round of applause for all the hardworking folks behind the scenes that make this possible. Make sure you continue to tune into Nintendo Treehouse Live all week long for more great Nintendo content. December 7th. Can't get here soon enough. Have a great rest of the week.